Hey there, everybody, and welcome. Today, I will be presenting a solo playthrough of Tricarion with all of the expansions added to it. The Dark Alley expansion, uh, I'll even throw in the Magician Powers expansion, even though that's technically not allowed when you're playing solo, but I'll talk more about that later. Uh, I will be, of course, playing with the new Doll Guards Academy expansion. Basically, throwing everything into the mix here. In addition to the uh, actual the actual solo playthrough, I will be, of course, explaining how the solo game works. Also, for those of you watching this who are not intimately familiar with the game, I'll sort of explain what's going on with the game as well. And... Uh, uh, hopefully by the time I'm finished, which will probably be 12 hours from now, because <laughs> this is a pretty long game, you know, how the game actually plays out will be uh, much more familiar to you. Now, uh, obviously, let's let's get the vanishing elephant to, in the room uh, off the table right away. If you're not a subscriber to my channel, then you're you may not know that what I do is I take games that I love, I program them, and then use the program that I write to actually present the game. You know, oftentimes a solo playthrough, sometimes multiplayer playthroughs, that sort of thing. Actually, programming the game helps me ensure that I've mastered the rules and that I'm playing everything correctly for purposes of my video. Uh, that I don't make any silly, forgetful mistakes, that sort of thing. It also makes it obviously easier for me to film these videos because I don't have to worry about a, holding a handheld camera and, and zooming it all over a board and whatnot. Um, if you are interested in the idea or, or you're curious, you can, all, you can, of course, subscribe to my channel and check out some of the other videos I've done on a whole host of other games. I tend to like uh, heavier Euro type games, but uh, it's a pretty broad mix. I guess I should start by saying that for those of you who are not familiar with Tricarian, uh, legend has it, I guess, that Richard Amon and Victor Peter, the original designers of the, of the game Tricarian, uh, were watching the 2006 Nolan Brothers movie The Prestige, starring Hugh Jackman and Christian Bale, and Scarlett Johansson, and a bunch of other obvious stars. And of course, that's not true. <laughs> or maybe it's true, but I don't know. I just made that up. But it sure could be true because the similarities between the game and the actual movie The Prestige are pretty pronounced. The, uh, the late 19th century... Uh, Edwardian England setting, uh, the uh, teleporting man trick, the design of the trick markers. I mean, there the number of similarities are, are pretty startling. Uh, so it certainly seems that uh, the designers were watching that movie and said to each other, hey, this would make a great uh, board game. Let's design it and call it Tricarian. I should also point out that the designers of the solo of variant, which is new to the game, as is the whole Doll Guards Academy expansion, are, um, I'm going to mess this up, Benjamin Tiemann and David Turksey. I apologize to all four of you if I'm mispronouncing any of your names. What else is there to say? Okay, well, I guess I have to uh, talk about uh, a little bit of history first. I just have to get this out of the way. I am very new to the game. Uh, uh, while I've been familiar with the game Tricarian for a number of years, I didn't really get interested in it uh, until about three months ago, maybe? The fall of 2018. And once I did get interested in it, I just dove right into the deep end. I late pledged for the Kickstarter, uh, the Collector's Edition, which is supposed to be delivered in April, maybe May, if it's delayed of of, uh, of this year, 2019, and um, but I've never actually played the game. Uh, obviously, once I became interested in the game, I poured over the rules, mastered them to the best of my ability. Obviously, I had to in order to program the game 
uh, because I'm certainly hopeful that I programmed it as close to 100% correctly as possible. I sure like my videos to be totally accurate. The truth of the matter is I've never actually played the game. So you're going to have to, number one, apologize for the fact that, that you're not watching this to see how to play the game well. You're watching this to see how to play the game, and especially how to play the new Dog Arts Academy expansion and the solo variant as well. It's important that you know all this because I don't actually own the game yet either. Uh, I... I've ordered the Kickstarter, so I haven't actually gotten it yet. And in order to program the game, I had to scrounge through the Internet as much as possible to get the images I needed to uh, for the game. But uh, the Dog Arts Academy expansion is so new that there aren't a lot of images out there. So I really, a lot of the stuff you're going to see is not as nice as most of my uh, games are because I, I just don't have the, the, the actual uh, uh, scanned material, material yet. So a lot, of the, a lot of the images are going to be blurry, or they're going to be a little crooked, or, you know, it all depends upon how I got the image in the first place. But, but, the, but a lot of the images, of course, are going to be uh, very clean as well. So don't worry that you're wa going to watch this and not actually get a good idea of of actually what the what the game looks like, but I'm just warning you ahead of time that uh, a large part of the at least the Dog Guards Academy expansion is going to be blurry, and uh, I just don't have the game pieces, and they haven't even been finalized yet. So as far as I know, what you're seeing here, as far as the expansion is concerned, that this latest expansion may be changed or tweaked once the game is finally released um, in, the, in the next, uh, I guess, what, three or four months or so. With that out of the way, let's actually begin. Uh, uh, when you're playing solo, you're playing against an imaginary character called the Air, H-E-I-R. So the air in my game here is going to be the yellow pieces, and I'm going to be the, I guess, the blue pieces. That's what I got here. I, I Maybe I'll choose red. Uh, yeah, I'll choose red. It'll stand out a little bit better. Uh, and as I said, I'm going to be playing with all the expansions, the Dark Alley expansion, and I'll explain what all these expansions are and, and what they add to the game as, uh, as we're playing. Uh, of course, the Dog Guards Academy expansion, as I already mentioned, and I will be playing with the Magician Powers expansion that's part of the Dog Guards Gift expansion, which uh, came out very shortly after the game was originally released, I guess back in what, 2015 or so. And as I mentioned, the Magician Powers are not technically supported uh, by the solo rules. And, and, I, and as far as I can conclude, that's because the air, the solo player, the AI player in the game, doesn't play with the magician powers. But that doesn't prevent the human player from playing with them. So uh, in order, one, to uh, show you as much of all the pieces and aspects of the game as possible, and two, for me, a new player to this game, to have an edge over the air, uh, I'm going to be playing with the Magician Powers because they will be giving me a leg up um, and make it a little bit easier on me when I'm competing against the air. Suffice it to say that I will be playing on the easy level today. And, of course, because I'm using the Magician Powers, oh, and I'll explain that as I go, uh, you, can, you might call this the ultra easy version of the game. Let's actually go ahead and click OK and, and get underway. So this is the, uh, underneath these initial starting screens, this is the main board of Tricarian that you see here. The Dog, the Dog Arts expansion is out here on the far left. As I said, this is, this is somewhat blurry. It's not as is clean and nice looking as this image is, is uh, for reasons that I've already gone into. But um, 
it's certainly good enough for for this video today now before we begin I have to, I as the human player have to choose a school of magic that I'm going to be playing with and I have decided to give me another leg up on the AI player uh, I am going to be playing uh, the spiritual magic school there are three different magicians in each one of these four different schools of magic and for the spiritual school there's the priestess of mysticism Yoruba spirit master and the latest addition uh, Anjali which uh, is a is a new magician coming out with the um, Dog Arts Academy expansion I'm going to be going with Yoruba spirit master and I'll explain why uh, a little bit later but his special ability is that uh, before my opponent chooses a card to perform I can pay what's called a Dracarian shard one of the currencies of the game and choose the card for my opponent to perform instead of allowing my opponent to choose the card to perform uh, that will allow that will basically give me a, another uh, uh, trick up my sleeve oh god that's a terrible uh, pun sorry about that anyway I'm gonna go with Yoruba and to begin the game I need to choose a starting trick from the spiritual school of magic and it has to be a level one trick and these are the level one tricks up here these four tricks up here this is the spiritual class the spiritual school selected and I'm going to be going with the mind reading trick uh, specifically because while when I perform this trick or when this trick is performed it's not going to give me any points any fame or money but it will give me a Tricarian shard and as I already said I want to have as many Tricarian shards as possible one because I'm playing Yoruba spirit master but also because I'm playing with the magician powers and they're very much tied into Tricarian shards as you will soon see so I'm gonna go with the mind reading trick as my starting trick and then I get to choose two coins worth of components now there are 12 different components in the game uh, there are four uh, what you might call base components they're basic there are four which are fabric glass metal and wood there are four advanced components animals oil cans or petroleum ropes and saws and there are actually four superior components that aren't shown here which include things like padlocks and cogs and uh, disguises and mirrors I get to choose two coins worth of starting components and if I happen to choose enough components to um, be able to prepare my trick the uh, mind reading trick I need to have two pieces of glass two panes of glass those are the requirements for performing uh, the uh, preparing the mind reading trick so I am going for my two coins worth of components the basic components are one coin each the advanced components are two coins each and the superior components are three coins each I'm going to start with two panes of glass so I can have my trick uh, the uh, mind reading trick prepared even before I begin so I'm going to select one pane of glass and another pane of glass now before I begin I can also choose a specialist who's going to help me uh, the magician who's going to help me in my uh, quest to succeed in Tricarian and I can either choose an assistant who provides an extra free apprentice especially if you select the assistant at the beginning of the game uh, I will be starting with uh, my magician character I will also have an, an apprentice to begin with and I'll also have a character called the protege who is new to the um, a, a dog arts Academy expansion but as I said in addition to those characters I can choose either an assistant 
uh, who can come with another apprentice who I don't have to pay wages for, or I could choose an engineer who has the capability and special ability of holding an additional trick for me and providing what's called an additional trick marker. Um, uh, or I can choose a manager who gives me the ability of storing additional components in addition to what I've already chosen, the two glass. But not only that, the, man the manager gives me an added ability of uh, having one more component than what I've actually uh, purchased, if you will. Now, all these special abilities you don't get if you get the uh, get these specialists during the game but you do get the special ability if you select that specialist at the beginning of the game as I'm doing right now and I think because when I looked at a lot of these other tricks that I might want to uh, add on to my repertoire a lot of them require rope uh, here's rope here and rope here and rope down here as well and even in other classes uh, or other schools of magic rope is a very popular commodity so I think I am going to, to select a manager as my specialist and because I'm selecting the manager and my manager is going to give me this uh, an additional ability of, of coming with two coins worth of components, I could choose another two coins worth of components to put on my manager. And I'm going to choose a rope. So one rope, which costs two coins, so that's two coins worth of components. But because of the manager's special ability, I'm actually going to have two ropes. But I only have to select one rope uh, here in the beginning of the game. And I've already done that. So that's done. Now, because I'm playing with the magician powers, I am dealt 12 different magician power cards. Four in level one, or what's called fame threshold one. Four cards from the fame threshold 16 which I can't use until I've accumulated 16 points or 16 fame in the game, or, or if I pay money to, to make up the difference between the fame that I have and the number 16. Oh, and an additional four cards that are in the 36 threshold, 36 fame threshold as well. Of course, I can't even begin to think about using those cards until I get my fame up to 36 or thereabouts or higher. But for now I'm dealt these 12 cards at random from the Magician Powers deck and I have to choose four of them to discard which will give me a hand of eight to play with over the course of the game. So real quickly here I am going to uh, I think I'm going to start from the high end and, and, and then go from there. So let's see, Wonders of Technology. When you use the prepare action on a trick, you can choose to spend an additional uh, action. If you do, you receive all of your available trick markers. So that's fine. Stolen Secrets. When you perform, choose an opponent's trick uh, marker in your performance. Trick yields are paid to you as well. Network of Supporters. You get some additional fame. Jack of all trades, you get additional fame at the end of the game if you have a trick of two, three, or four different trick categories. I, I don't know that, that I'm going to necessarily go for that. So I'm going to go get rid of and choose to discard jack of all trades. But I have to still discard three other cards. Telepathic orders, once per turn you may place one of your character on any location, not just the one printed on the assignment card below it. Of course, all this will make more sense once I'm actually playing the game. I'm going to dump that card as well. After revealing the assignment cards, you can pay two coins to choose one of your permanent assignment cards and use with this. You know, I'll dump that card as well. I just, I'm just making some quick choices here. And I should say that for purposes of this playthrough, most of my choices are going to be pretty quick. I'm not going to be putting a lot of thought into them. I don't, as I said, this is a long game to begin with, so I don't want this to go on, this video to go on longer than it has to. 
So some of my choices are going to be pretty quick uh, and probably bad. Uh, so uh, don't be overly critical in the comments um, as far as my making bad choices here playing the game. But please do make comments if you see anything that I'm doing incorrectly or any rule I may have misinterpreted or anything that my program's doing incorrectly. Of course, I do want to hear about that. Uh, anyway, I still have one more card I have to get rid of. Flexible planning, black market, admittance, salvaging. Uh, yeah, I'll get rid of salvaging. So that's the fourth card I'm discarding. And these other eight cards are the cards that I will be able to play with over the course of the game. So there we go. Let me get rid of the work, but the magician's workbook here. Now, at the beginning, the, one of the initial phases of the game is the roll dice phase. You heard the dice rolling, and that's what happened first. Um, and I'll talk more about these dice and what they do. There are also turn setup dice that are rolled as part of the uh, solo game. Uh, these block off certain uh, worker placement spaces. Uh, to keep the to limit the number of choices that can be uh, where I where I can play and where the uh, air the AI player can play as well. Uh, so for those of you who are not familiar with Jacarian, let me quickly say that this is big, by and large a very heavy, complicated worker placement game, and. Uh, the kinds of things you can do are you can go into the downtown to, to learn new tricks. That's what the white dice are for. You can hire new specialists or apprentices. That's what the gray dice are for. Or you can collect money uh, from the bank. Other locations in the game include the market row where you can order new components or purchase new components. Um, both you can order as well as purchase components that are available. Only the basic components are available at the start of the game. There is the dark alley over here in the bottom right. The dark alley uh, allows you to add cards to your hand that give you additional special abilities when you visit different locations um, in the game, like downtown and the market row and so forth. Uh, so they'll they'll be giving some, one they'll giving me uh, be giving me special abilities for those locations if I get some of those cards and I'm sure I will and they also give me the ability to send multiple characters uh, to the same location which you oftentimes can't do because other uh, you only have in your hand one card or one assignment card for any particular location. The uh, theater is over here, and then the academy, the new Dog Arts Academy expansion, as I already said, is way over here on the left. So those are the kinds of things you can do in the game, visiting all these different things, accumulating different resources, getting more tricks, performing the tricks, and getting better and more famous, and improving your tricks, and basically scoring more points. This box shows that both uh, the air and I start with three fame. I start with 12 coins. I'm the starting player. The air does not get to start with any coins. The air doesn't get to start with any Tricarian shards either, but the air will certainly be accumulating coins and Tricarian shards over the course of the game. Now, normally, if you're playing the game, you get one, you as the human player get one Tricarian shard. But since I'm playing with the Magician Powers um, expansion, I actually get three Tricarian shards to begin the game with. Now, because I'm playing with the Magician Powers, I won't get any points for my Tricarian shards at the end of the game. If you're not playing with that expansion, you get one point for every Tricarian shard you have at the end of the game. The heir will be getting a point for each Tricarian shard that, uh, that he accumulates over the course of the game. All right, so we've done the, uh, the roll dice phase. 
There's an initiative order phase, but at the start of the game, as I already said, I am the starting player, and that's indicated here by me having my character marker in the first slot. Uh, the second player, the heir, it actually occupies the, the third slot. When you're playing a multiplayer game of three or more players, then you actually assign the slots as you normally might in, would rather in turn, natural turn order. But when you're playing a two player game, which is carrying, the starting player is in the first slot and the second player is in the third slot. Uh, because that changes the amount of money you can spend to advertise. And now we're in the advertising phase. The advertising phase is very quick. Um, the starting player has the choice of paying one coin to get two fame right off the bat, just like that. And the second player, being in the third position, can pay three coins to get uh, that same additional two fame. So I'm being asked here, uh, I have 12 coins, that's what I had to start with. Do I want to advertise and spend one coin to score two fame? And that's pretty cheap. Uh, I've got 12 coins at the beginning of the game. I'm not broke or not close to being broke, but I probably will be soon enough. So I will go ahead and spend a coin to score two fame right off the bat. The air, the AI player, always takes, always advertises, doesn't have to spend the coin, and automatically gets two fame at the beginning of every round. The game is played over seven rounds. This is round one of seven. So that's that's 14 fame right there that the air is going to get free of charge. Uh, two fame per for each of seven rounds. And as I said, the air doesn't have to pay the way I do. Uh, but yes, I will go ahead and pay one coin, so that will drop me from 12 to 11, and and the, the, we will really begin the game with a with fame of five each, uh, because we're each going to be getting two additional fame right now uh, for purposes of the advertising. So there's uh, that's me, and there we are, each of us with uh, five fame. And now we're in the assignment phase. This is where we take the cards in our hand and assign them to our different characters um, uh, to, dic to dictate where they're going to eventually, pro and where they'll probably be assigned in the game, what locations they're going to be sent to in the game. Not necessarily the order, but at least what locations they're going to be uh, going to. Now, I have a hand of assignment cards that gives me one card for each of the locations in the game, except for the theater. I get to have two theater cards. Uh, and if I accumulate some additional Dark Alley cards later, I will uh, have additional cards in my hand that I can use for assignment purposes. Now, before I get to the, assign the assignments, as the, at the start of the assignment phase, um, I get to choose one magician power. Now, the three shards that I've uh, started the game with are stored here on the left side of my player board. Here's one shard. There are two shards here. As I accumulate more shards, three more, the next three will show up here. The next four will show up here. And then I'll, whatever's after that will be excess. But I start with these three shards. And that means I can have a power in this slot, a magician power, that will break the rules of the game for me. And potentially I can have a power in this slot because I have the, the requisite number of shards, two. If I ever spend one of these shards and I have a power here, uh, I will lose that power. It'll go back into my hand. Uh, because you have to always, in order to use the power, you have to have the correct number of shards assigned to it. One shard for the lowest power, two shards for the next power, three shards for the next, four shards for the, the fourth. And uh, so you tend to assign powers from the bottom up, and you spend your shards from the top down. So um, I, I will be assigning a power here in this first slot, uh, but if I do spend some shards over the course of this first round, I'll be spending these shards uh, before I spend this shard. 
So let's take a look at the, remember I could only use a power one, well, a power with a fame threshold of one initially, because I don't have 16 fame yet, so I can't use the 16 fame cards. And I kept one, two, three level one cards. Persistence to this reward, Path of Greatness, and Megoria's, uh, Megoria's Benefactor. So Megoria's Benefactor says at the beginning of the place characters phase, this is after the assignment phase when you actually start playing, placing characters, you may pay two coins. If you do, you may set any one of the components, or any one of the dice, I should say, to a result of your choice. Uh, that is the white dice, the gray dice, or the black dice that are in the downtown uh, part area of the game. Uh, that doesn't look overly appealing to me uh, right off the bat. Path of Greatness, you may ignore the fame threshold when you learn magician powers. That's interesting. Um, Persistence's reward says whenever you spend a shard, a Dracarian shard, you may put one of the spent shards on this card instead of returning it to the supply as you normally would. You can have a maximum of one shard on this card. And then whenever you, oops, sorry about that, whenever you perform, you may take the shard from this card back into your supply. So basically it's like having spending a shard for free and getting it back later. I think that's the magician power I'm going to start with. Now this uh, card indicates that I can place this power either in the first slot at the bottom or the second slot. Obviously, because of what I described earlier, I'm going to want to put this in the first slot, and that's where I'm going to put it. So it's going to leave my hand of powers. Now I only have a hand of seven cards uh, of my powers. One of them, the eighth card, is actually out here in my display, to the side of my uh, player board showing that that power is now active again as long as this shard is in this slot. So I'll have to remember that if I spend a shard I can put it on this card and get it back later if I perform. And I suspect I will be performing a lot in this game because I need to score as much fame as possible to keep up with the uh, with the air. So as I said earlier, I start with a magician character. Magician has a base number of action points uh, of three. Action points are what you spend to take actions in this game. And the magician has three action points. My apprentice that I started the game with only has one action point. My protege only has one action point. And to start with, although the, the protege can, can accumulate secrets over the course of the game and become more powerful. And my manager over here, uh, who could have been male or female, I could, I could actually change the gender of my manager back and forth if I want to. As you can see, the Edwardian theme, the 19th century theme comes through pretty strikingly here. Um, yeah, let's go with a, a, a female manager. Here's my manager. Uh, also, as I, sh I, started, uh, I started the game with these two panes of glass. These are in my collection of components here. And my manager has spaces for two additional, uh, two additional components. Remember, I bought one rope, but the manager's special ability, uh, ability is that I effectively have two ropes. So I have two ropes and two panes of glass. I have my mind reading trick. Remember, because I, uh, I met the component requirements of the trick at the start of the game, getting those two panes of glass, uh, I, have, I start the game with this trick prepared, meaning that I have three trick markers on it. If you take a look at the, the, the card itself, uh, when you get a trick, when you learn a trick, you assign a, a, a a symbol to it, a club, a spade, a heart, or a diamond, and uh, and then that sh that is shown here. That basically identifies the trick. Um, and then when you prepare a trick, you get a certain number of trick markers over here on the left. This shows that the mind reading trick will grant me thr tr three trick markers if I once I prepare it. And because I started I started the game with it being prepared. I have three 
club trick markers with. My program automatically started me uh, off with the club symbol. doesn't really matter which symbol you choose. That's just a, uh, you just have to have a unique symbol for each of the four possible tricks you, you might uh, be storing on your board at any one time or another. So that's the layout of my player board. Uh, oh, also the other location I didn't talk about is the workshop. That's where you go to prepare tricks. The workshop is a location that's, that's actually located right on your player board. So this is my base player board here. The protege is an additional attachment, if you will, another another player mat that's placed to the side of my main player mat and then my manager is another player mat that's placed to the side and as I hire other specialists over the course of the game my player board will be growing in size as I add these additional sideboards to uh, to the side of my uh, player board anyway long story short I've got four characters here I'm starting the game with and I need to assign where I want to send these different characters uh, over the course of the round. Now, as I said, I want to, uh, because I've started this uh, with the mind reading trick already prepared, I think I want to perform that trick right off the bat. So in order to perform it, I need to send my magician to the theater. So I'm going to take one of my two theater cards and assign it to the magician. So he can perform that trick uh, in the theater at some point, be it on Thursday or Friday or Saturday or Sunday. There are four days worth of performances in the game. Now, in order for my magician to, to perform the trick, it has to be set up backstage first. So I'm going to have to assign another character to set up my trick, to set up my mind reading trick. And I could send an apprentice or I can send my manager or I can send my protege to go backstage and help me out with that. Um, I think I am going to go ahead and I will assign my manager that task because my manager has two action points. So, um, well actually, let me think about that. There's only one performance card you start with at the, at the beginning of the game. This is what a performance card looks like. It's the Riverside Theater. And these are special performance cards that are used in a solo game, or for that matter, a two-player game, because they already have a trick marker placed on them that's been rotated in a certain position because there are bonuses you can gain when you place trick markers on performances you get bonuses if you match the symbols. I'll talk more about that later on. So, uh, because there's only one performance card, I can only set up one performance of my mind reading trick. So that the truth of the matter is, I don't need the two action points that the manager provides. I only need one action point to set up the mind reading trick. But the other advantage of having my manager backstage is that when my magician does perform, I will get up. My manager provides me a bonus of three additional coins. Uh, and because money's so tight, I think I will send the manager backstage. Um, if you send your assistant, I think the assistant grants you two additional fame. Um, let me check that here uh, by looking at the board. So, uh, all players earn modified yields for their tricks. Performing Magician's Bonus is one fame per link if you have a backstage assistant. Oh, I'm sorry, one fame per link. And then an additional two fame if you have a backstage assistant. An additional one shard if you have a, 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 an engineer backstage. And an, or an additional, and or an additional three coins if you have a manager backstage. Now there's one place for the performing magician here in this row, and then there are two slots behind the magician backstage. So I can actually have as many as two other characters backstage helping out my magician. But right now I'm only going to be having my manager backstage. So both my manager and my magician are going to be going to the theater over the course of the round. I think... Um, 
I do want to get some dark alley cards as soon as possible. So I'm going to send, I'll send my protege with one action point to the dark alley. And then my apprentice doesn't need to go to the workshop because I don't have to prepare a trick. My trick's already prepared. I could send the, um, uh, I could send my apprentice downtown to maybe learn another trick. Um, yeah, I think I'm, I'm going to I'm going to do that. I'm going to send my apprentice downtown. Uh, I was thinking about possibly sending the apprentice to the academy because there are some benefits to getting to going to the academy early on. Uh, but we'll hold off on the academy until uh, maybe round two or so. So now I've assigned care, uh, uh, locations to all four of my characters. That ends my turn in the assignment phase. I remember I also have this magician power. And now once I click and turn, the, um, the heir will come up with his assignments. So let's go ahead, go to the heir. And now we're in the place characters phase, but let me very quickly go back to the heirs display here. So you can see that the heir is going to be sending his magician to the academy. He's going to be, he's not going to be performing this round. He's going to be sending his, uh, his um, protege, I should say, downtown. Sending his specialist, he actually has a uh, an engineer here, but he doesn't really differentiate between specialists. He just has a specialist that he started with. That specialist is going to be going to the theater to set up tricks for maybe a future performance down the road. And then sending the heir is also sending his apprentice to the workshop. You can see that there are additional slots here that uh, so the heir can accumulate a, uh, or hire other characters over the course of the game can have as many as six active characters, and can collect additional apprentices over and above that. And that's what that, that this box up here tracks. But right now the game only, the air has only started with four, um, uh, four, uh, uh, four characters. Now as you can see, the air is playing with the gentleman uh, who doesn't really look like Hugh Jackman and doesn't really look like Christian Bale, but is sort of dressed like, I guess is dressed like Hugh, Hugh Jackman in the movie The Prestige, right up with the, with the cane and all. Um, and the, the gentleman magician is from the optical school of magic. And therefore the air started with an optical trick uh, one, uh, uh, one of the level one or uh, threshold one tricks at random, the pub in a bottle trick. I'm not actually sure what the pub in the bottle trick is or how it works, uh, but you can sort of guess at it by just looking at this image. Uh, and you can see that the when uh, the the air starts with uh, his trick already pre uh, prepared as well so he's also started with a club symbol and has two trick markers on his pub and a bottle trick because the pub and a bottle when it's prepared gets two trick markers assigned to it uh, usually uh, any any particular trick will either have one trick marker or two trick markers or a maximum of usually three trick markers uh, but there are actually a maximum of five you can have in the game for each symbol. Um, and there are other, and there are ways that you can actually add additional trick markers over and above what the, what the trick grants you. But, uh, that's, those are special abilities and things like that. But so right now the air has this pub in a bottle trick with two trick markers on it. There's nine plan cards in total that come with the uh, solo expansion. And the playing cards look like this. They're basically a card that indicates what each of the characters is going to be doing, where they're going to be going. So the, you could see that the first character, uh, and these are, are always or are usually in descending order of action points, 
but it's always the, but not necessarily as you can see it's always the magician then the protege then any specialist like the engineer or the assistant or the manager because they have two action points and then all the apprentices are to the right of, of any specialists uh, so while it de depicts six different locations here the Academy downtown the theater a dark alley ca a card that's pointing to the that's assigned to the downtown a workshop and a um, a market row card uh, the um, I only have four the air only starts with four characters so only the first four cards uh, first four assignments are used so as you can see the magician is going to the Academy the protege will be going to downtown the specialist will be going to the theater now the air doesn't start the game with any dark alley cards that's what this symbol indicates a dark alley card assigned to downtown so because the air doesn't have a downtown dark alley card we're going to skip over that assignment go to the next one for this apprentice and that's the workshop so the the apprentice will be going to the workshop in this case now the as I said there are nine possible uh, plan cards that you can be playing with you actually set up a deck of seven plan cards one for each round of the game there are seven rounds in the game uh, and this is the first plan card for the game now the the plan cards come in two different varieties set up plan cards that look that look like this where there's an icon at the top but no icon at the bottom that indicates that the magician or the heir is preparing or getting ready to, to perform in a future time but is sort of setting up um, so right now the heir is busy preparing because his first plan card is a setup card now the actual solo rules indicate that when you're creating a plan deck what you do is you take a one of the I think there are four as I said there are nine cards I think I'm not sure what the distribution is it's probably four uh, perform cards and five setup cards so the of the four perform cards you choose one at random and you put it at the bottom of the deck that indicates that the plan card for the air in the seventh round of the game will always be a performance the air will always perform in the last round of the game then you take a setup card and two performance cards plan cards I should say those uh, one setup and and two performance cards you shuffle them out you shuffle them together face down you take one away you remove one and just set it completely aside and then you put the the remaining two cards on top of the performance so uh, in rounds five and six you're either going to be setting up in one of those rounds and perform in the other or you're going to be performing in both uh, because as I said of those two slots you have a one setup card and two perform cards and you're only choosing two of those three at random uh, unseen so you can either have a one setup and one perform or two performs uh, of course I don't know what uh, how my uh, program set that up it's all done at random of course uh, then on top of that for purposes of rounds two three and four you take two setup cards and one perform card you shuffle those together put those on top so the in rounds two three and four the air will be setting up twice in two of those rounds and performing in only one of those rounds and then finally you take one of the remaining two setup cards at random and you put that on the top of the deck and that's what this card is it's the top card of the deck it's always a setup so uh, to summarize the air will always be setting up in round one of the game in rounds two and three they'll and four they'll be setting up and and or performing um, setting up in two of those rounds performing in one of those rounds in rounds five and six 
um, they'll either be setting up and performing or perform, performing in both of those rounds. And then finally in round seven, they'll always be performing. But this is the first plan card, and it's a setup card, and it's placed on the in this position here on the heirs player board. Um, if you if it happened to be a performance card, it would be placed on the top usually. When you place this card on the bottom, the icons up here sort of indicate what the prior summarize what the priorities are for uh, the air uh, when the air is uh, preparing or setting up. And when you place this card on the top, when it's a performance card, the icons on the bottom show a different set of priorities uh, for the air when the when you when the air is going to be performing that round. Uh, but all that's going to be done automatically by my program. Now there is a a shopping card over here that the air collects. Um, the air collects prepares a shopping cart based on the component requirements of the trick that the air selected. If you take a look at the pub on the bottle trick, it requires a rope, a saw, and three panes of glass. So the air added a rope, a saw, and glass to a shopping cart so that if it ever goes to the market row, it's going to be using those. Uh, you'll see basically how that works later on. If it, you know when the when the air actually goes to the market row, but right now we can see that the air is not going to be going to the market row in uh, round one. Okay, so we'll talk more about how the air actually works, how the solo game works when the air starts playing the game. But for now, let's go back to my display because we're now in the place characters phase. This is where I choose where I want to, which character I want to place first. Now it's important for me to know that uh, the heir and I are in contention to a certain degree because the heir is going to be sending his protege downtown and I want to send my apprentice downtown. But other than that, and I guess uh, the air is also going to be going to the theater, and I'm going to be going to the theater, and all of this is important because, remember I indicated that your characters have a, a base number of action points, but where you place them gives you additional action points. In each one of these locations, uh, there is a slot that grants you two additional action points, there are two slots that grant you one additional action point, and there's one slot, always on the far right, that grants you zero additional action points over and above the base. Now remember we're playing with the turn setup dice that automatically blacked out or had tokens covered the covering some of these spaces in each one of the different locations. So the the plus one spaces of the downtown area are both blocked off. The plus one and the plus zero slots of the market row are blocked off. The uh, plus one and plus zero slots of dark alley are blocked off. Uh, the plus two and the plus one slots of the academy are blocked off and then finally in the theater the, the theater is a little different because as I said the theater is broken out by day so there are three slots for Thursday three th slots for Friday three slots for Saturday and three slots for Sunday's performance but right now the turn setup dice uh, oops little bug there uh, this is going to be minor bugs <laughs> But it says somebody's assistant at the theater, um, but it's of course just a non-existent blank piece. So I guess I should fix that at some point. We can only assign, send our, our, our magician or our characters backstage either to the Saturday performance or the Sunday performance. Now that's important to me because the I should summarize that the Thursday slots uh, when you're when you're performing or sending somebody backstage, you pick a day, and that's the day that's your assignment. Uh, so if you're sending your character, say to Thursday, you're, that's the only 
day you can go to, Thursday. And other players can go to other days. So it's a little bit of first come, first serve, but once you, once you pick a day, that's the day you're going with. Now the advantages, the pros and cons of Thursday are that you get plus two, a uh, plus one action point backstage. However, when you perform, you get a minus one fame and a minus one coin modifier. So when you perform your tricks on Thursday, one fame and one coin are always subtracted from the the normal fame and number of coins you would earn by performing that trick. Um, I guess I should show you that uh, my trick, you could see, uh, as I said earlier, actually I did point this out, my trick doesn't generate any fame and doesn't generate any coins. It only generates one shard. And um, I guess I should point out that the heirs trick, uh, the pub in a bottle, produces two fame and two money over here. But the air is different. The air doesn't care about modifiers. The air ignores all modifiers, actually, for that matter. So uh, the air really is not going to necessarily care which day it performs on, but I certainly will, as I said, because I do get an additional action point if I perform on Thursday, but I suffer a minus one fame, minus one coin modifier on Thursday. Now, for now, that doesn't bother me because I don't earn a coin or a fame for my uh, mind reading trick as it is. So a, mo a minus one modifier doesn't go below zero. Uh, Friday and Saturday uh, generally have a zero modifier. And if you perform on Sunday, which is the best day for a magician performance, is you get the best audiences. Uh, the audiences are most impressed because they think the magicians that perform on Sunday are the real special magicians. So you get a minus one action point modifier backstage, but the advantage is that your performance modifier is plus one fame, plus one coin. So um, if I'm willing to give up one of, uh, if I'm willing to have a minus one action point backstage, I'll want to perform myself on Sunday to get that plus one fame, plus one coin modifier. Uh, so that if I perform my mind reading trick, I'll, uh, I'll get a shard and a fame and a coin. And that is a possibility here that I might perform on Sunday, depending upon who goes, who goes to the theater first and which day they, sh they, they choose. Um, so that's a basic, so that's a, a summary of how the slots work in the game. So right now, I have to pick where I want to send my first character. And I know that I'm in contention with with the air as far as downtown is concerned and as far as the theater is concerned. I'm probably going to be sending my apprentice to the downtown first so that I can grab the plus two action point slot. Truth of the matter is, in order to do anything of any purpose downtown, you have to um, have three action points. You have to have three action points to learn a trick. You have to have three action points to hire an apprentice or a specialist. And you have to have three action points to go to the bank and get some money. I should say I took note of all this when I was selecting uh, the downtown because I knew that the plus two slot was available, that it didn't get blacked out. I took note of that when I looked at the turn setup dice. And uh, so I knew I could afford to send my apprentice downtown if I got there early and got to that two plus two action point slot. That would give me the three action points I needed to accomplish something downtown. Uh, the one from the, the apprentice and the two from the slot, making a total of three. So I'm going to select my apprentice. I'm going to put my apprentice in the plus two action point slot downtown. I have to do it because that's the, the assignment card that I assigned to the apprentice. The apprentice has to go downtown. Can't cheat at the last minute unless I have a dark alley character or a magician power that lets me cheat. So uh, that is where my apprentice is, is going to be going. And so you can see that I have three action points that I can play with downtown. 
Now you also have the ability, if you're not going, if you're not in the theater, you always have the ability to get one extra action point by spending one shard. Now the air never does that, but you could, but you as the human player can do that, and because I do have shards, I'm able to do that. But I don't have to, and there's really no need for me to do that because I have the three action points that I need to do something downtown, and I'm. I'm happy enough, I guess I should say, with the dice that I see here. You can always spend action points to, you can spend one action point if you have it to re-roll one of these dice. You can spend two action points to set one of the dice to any face that you want it to be set to. And it just occurred to me I overlooked something here that I, uh, not, related to what I'm doing right this moment, but uh, I do want to make mention of the fact that part of the Dark Alley are these prophecies over here that are poised to change the rules of the game in future rounds. So unless these are rotated, which you can do for one action point when you go to the Dark Alley, <laughs> the next prophecy to get come into play is this one. It'll get in next round, it'll come in and move into this space. And this prophecy says that all performer bonuses are doubled this turn. So next round is going to be a big round for performing. Um, it'll be interesting to see if the air ends up performing as well. Um, that's, of course, a, 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 as we already saw, a little bit of randomness instilled there, so we don't know. Uh, but there's a chance. But anyway, I, I wanted to make mention of that because I had forgotten. So now back to the downtown. Why did I come downtown? Well, I didn't come downtown to learn a new trick because I'm because right now I have a trick at level one and I'm not really anywhere close to being able to uh, learn a trick of fame 16 uh, with a fame threshold of 16. Uh, I, I could do it if I paid for the difference in coins. That would be 16 minus 5 or 11 coins. Uh, that, I, I'm not going to spend all my money just for that. So that doesn't make sense. Uh, I could, uh, I don't need, I didn't need to come here to get some money. What I wanted to do was hire somebody else to join my team. Uh, the more people I have helping me, obviously, the more I can accomplish in a particular round. So, uh, now of course I'm going to have to pay the wages for this um, person that I put to work, but I won't actually hire the person until the end of this round, so none of this will take effect until the beginning of next round, round two. Now this is a specialist die, um, and three sides of this die are an X, one side's a manager, one side's a, an assistant, and one side is an engineer. And as you already know, I have a manager, um, but unfortunately the die turned out to be an X. And the only way I'd have a chance of changing it would be to take either this action, two action points to change the die and set it to whatever I want it to be, or one action point to uh, re-roll the die and take my chances. Um, but uh, I, I could uh, spend one of my shards to buy one more action point and then re-roll that die and see if I could get a better uh, specialist. But I don't think my odds are good. Uh, obviously, I can't hire, I cannot hire another manager. You can only have one of each type. So that means four sides of this die are of no value to me. And those odds are just not good. The odds that, that you know, one of the two sides that work for me will come up, uh, don't like them. The apprentice die, on the other hand, has one X on one side, and the, all the other sides are an apprentice. So if, usually you always you could always hire an apprentice, and that is what I'm going to go ahead and do. I'm going to hire a second apprentice. I have one right now. That's the that that's the guy I just sent downtown. I'm going to hire another apprentice. Each one of those uh, have a uh, you have to pay wages of one. Uh, coin at the end of the, every round if you put them to work that round. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and hire the apprentice. That will take up all, use up all my three action points and, and my turn. And again, I, as I said, I won't actually get the apprentice added to my player board until the end of this round.
Okay, so I paused uh, everything here because now it's the heir's turn. The heir has to decide where uh, he, and I'm just going to use, I'm going to assume the heir is a, a, a male, especially because his magician is a male. Um, so uh, the heir has to decide where, which one of these characters he's going to place next. Now the rules as to how the heir decides that is based on, first of all, it looks at all of the, all of the assignments that are contested. Uh, that is where uh, I have somebody going uh, to a location and the heir wants to go to that same location. Now if you recall, the downtown was contested, but it is no longer because now I've already gone. So now I have no a downtown character going to the uh, can, no, I have no character going downtown. So that's no longer a contested location. The only contested location is the theater. The heir only considers the theater to be contested if it's not talking about a magician going to the theater. Because if it's this, if it's magician magician is going to the theater, it's going there to perform. And the heir assumes that if I have a magician going to the theater. It's, it's going there to perform, uh, although it's possible to send your magician backstage and just use his extra action points, uh, but uh, the ear is just making the assumption that if uh, he doesn't include my magician for purposes of whether something's contested. But in this case, both we both have non character non magician characters going to the theater i've assigned my manager to the theater the heir has assigned his engineer to go to the theater so that is the one location that's contested and therefore that's where the heir is going to go next he's going to go to the theater now when the heir is preparing or busy in a busy stance he sends the character to the latest available day. So if he can take Sunday, he'll take Sunday away from me. He wants to steal uh, my opportunity to get an, a plus one modifier on Sunday. Uh, so he is probably going to go ahead. It should, if everything's working, I would expect that he will send his engineer to the theater, uh, put him on backstage on Sunday right here. Let's, let's first of all make sure that the program's working as I would expect. Uh, so I'm going to unpause. The air is placing the engineer in the theater. The air is placing up to two trick markers on performance cards, but uh, I can tell you right now he can't because he, there is only one performance card, and even though the pub of the bottle has two trick markers on it, he can't perform the pub of the bottle in the same place at the same time. What good is a mag magic show if the magician just does the same trick uh, twice in the performance? So you can't put the same trick on on the same performance. So all he's going to be able to do is place one of these trick markers for the pub and a bottle um, on the on the one performance card that exists. How, where did he where does he decide to do it? He decides to place it wherever he can get the best link bonus. So a link bonus is when, as I said before, is when you match the symbols uh, adjoining with one uh, with an existing trick marker that's at uh, on the theater. Now this pub in a bottle is an optical trick. So when the uh, air places this trick marker, the first rule he has to um, he has to attend to is that the optical part of the trick marker has to be in a circle. So just like this is right here, you'll see this optical uh, side of the trick marker, it's inside this circle. So if the uh, if the air came and placed his pub and a bottle trick marker with its uh, optical side pointing up, he will have created a link because it will have matched the symbols within the circle and therefore he is going to gain uh, he actually gains a choice of either one fame or one bonus uh, or two fame or two bonus if it's a fame uh, a 16 threshold trick or three fame or three bonus uh, three coins if it's a 36 threshold trick this is a one threshold trick so he's going to get one fame or one coin the heir always chooses to get um, fame instead of coins, 
And so therefore, I expect with the one action point he has available to him, he is going to place his pub in a bottle trick marker and create a link that will generate. And when you create a link, it generates one fame. Now, if you create a link where there's one of these shard markers, each player gets a shard bonus for the link. The fame or coin bonus only goes to the player. Um, and, and the threshold that counts is the threshold of the trick marker you're placing, not the threshold of the trick marker you're linking up with. So basically, uh, thematically, the magician is creating some synergy between the trick that he might perform that day with a trick that somebody else might perform that day to get the audience extra excited about it. Anyway, that's what I expect will happen here. Uh, let's go ahead and unpause and see. So he's placing the pub on a bottle trick. There's the trick marker. He's matching the optical symbols. He, that ding meant he got one additional fame. So he went from five to six and he's taken the lead in fame. And that was his turn. And now it's back to me. And now I know that nothing's contested. Uh, I will go ahead, and I know that he, uh, the, uh, the air is not going to the dark alley, so really it doesn't matter to me where I go next. I, I might as well just send my manager backstage to the theater. Now I have to, I cannot go on Sunday. That day has now been taken up by the air. So the only other day available to me, especially if I want to perform, is Saturday where I get a plus zero action point modifier. Because I'm sending my manager, I will have two action points to spend at the theater. But as I said, really, right now, I can only spend one action point to place my trick marker, my one trick marker on the one performance card that exists. And hopefully, I'll be able to generate a link bonus as well. Anyhow, let's uh, select the manager. We'll go backstage on Saturday. Okay, I'm going to select my mind, take one of my mind reading trick markers. Now, this is a spiritual trick, so the spiritual um, part of the trick marker has to be in a circle on the performance card. And what do you know? There's the spiritual marker of the trick marker that the air placed. I can put my trick right here. I've matched the symbols. It's a shard link. So we're each going to get one shard and I can take one fame or one coin. Um, so that ding ding means we each just got a shard. So I went to four, the air went to one. And do I want one fame or one coin? Um, I think I'm going to stick right for the moment. I'm going to take a coin. I don't think the one point's going to make that much of a difference. So I'm going to live with the one coin. Okay, that uses up one action point. So now I'm down to one, one action point remaining. The only other kind of action you can take in the theater is to reschedule a trick. That is to move it from its current position to another position on the same or different performance card. I have no reason to do that, so literally my turn is over. And we're back to the air. Now, what's the air going to do now? There are no contested locations, so what is the air goes through its priority list. If its stance is ready, it places a non-magician character on the, at the theater at the earliest possible day. That's already done. He's picked a day, and he's not ready anyway. His next priority is to go downtown, and that's where he's going to go. He's going to go downtown, and once he goes downtown, he's going to send his protege there. We'll, I'll pause it again, and uh, we'll uh, see what he does next. So there's only one slot remaining, um, and he, he took it. That, so he has available to himself one action point. Now, when the air goes downtown, he takes the number of action points he has, one action point in this case, and ties it to the difficulty setting 
easy, medium, or easy, normal, or hard. And we're playing easy. And there's a table in the um, a rule book for the solo guide uh, that uh, shows you how many dice he will actually choose to use um, when he, with one action point and easy. And basically, he's going to use one die. Uh, in fact, uh, easy, normal, or hard with one action point, he will always only affect one die. And with two action points, still, he'll always affect one die. He doesn't start looking at possibly working with two dice uh, until he has three action points to spend downtown, and only then when he's playing at the hard difficulty. Uh, by the way, I, I should have pointed out, when I hired the apprentice, that by using that die, I effectively shifted it back to an X. So now the only thing the heir can really do at this point is either learn an uh, optical trick or take money from the bank. Now, the heir already has a trick for the fame threshold he's currently at. So I don't think he see he doesn't see a need to, to learn another trick. So I think with the one die at his disposal, he is simply going to take six coins from the bank. Because every time you accumulates, accumulates ten or more coins during the pay wages phase at the end of the round, he will convert uh, 10 coins into two fame. Uh, so that will get him six coins closer to being able to do that because right now he doesn't have any coins to his name. So I expect he's going to go here and take the coins, the six coins. Oh no, he's learning a trick. So I guess I need to go back uh, to my downtown rules and see where I messed up. Oh, if the air has fewer than two tricks, with the fame threshold available to him, he learns a new trick. He wants to have multiple tricks, uh, even at the same fame threshold level, so that he can place multiple trick markers, uh, even on the same performance. So he is going to go ahead and learn an optical trick. He is going to take all of the optical tricks of the fame level that he's at, the level one at this point, those that are available, um, so my, my trick is a spiritual trick. So basically, he's going to take all four of the optical tricks. Uh, let me just make sure I'm remembering that. Uh, oh, no, he currently has pub in a bottle. So he's going to take the other three, shuffle them up, and uh, choose one at random. And then he's going to take all of the, just like he did with pub in a bottle, he's going to chain, check, take all of the uh, necessary um, components required for the, that trick and add them to his shopping list if they're not already there. So uh, let's see what he takes. He is taking the rabbit from the top hat. If I go back to the ears player board, he has both a pub and a bottle trick with the club symbol and now he has a rabbit from the top hat trick with the heart symbol and the animal requirement, the fabric and the metal requirement have all been added to his shopping list so that if he ever goes to the market row we'll see how that plays out. We'll talk about that when the time comes. Alright, back to me. I will um, go ahead and go to the dark alley. Now I'm going to be able to take the one action point available to my protege. Now, as, as I learn new secrets in the academy and add them to my protege's uh, card here, he, eventually he'll, uh, his action point count will increase. Um, but for the time being, he's still at one action point. But I'm going to be able to place him in the plus two action point slot. So I'm going to have three action points available to me. Okay. So there's my three action points. I could spend one action point to rotate the prophecies once if I wanted to, but I see no reason to. I'm planning to perform next turn, next round. Hopefully the um, the uh, air will not be performing, and that I'll be able to generate uh, this uh, double my performer bonus. Now you don't. We haven't actually talked about what the performer bonus is because I haven't. Act, nobody's actually performed yet, but you'll see me perform later this round, and you'll get an understanding of how that works. 
All right, so for my three action points, I'm not going to rotate the prophecies. So the only other thing I can do uh, at Dark Alley is start taking some cards and adding them to my hand. And the first card I take costs one action point. Any additional cards cost two action points. So with the three action points available to me, I can take two cards and add them to my hand. And I am going to take durable components. So that says at the end of the performance phase, when you would normally return all the trick markers for the tricks you performed, you actually get to take one of them back and put them back on the trick instead of just discarding it. So I'm going to take durable components. And I always like to have extra cards at the theater just so I have the option to place multiple characters backstage. So I've added durable components. And now, what do I want? Uh, so do I want another uh, theater? Or let's see. As one buying action, you may return a shard and receive any number of components available at the market row for uh, four coins or less without paying money. A four coin deal. Uh, that's pretty good. I know I'm going to want to get some more components because I'm going to want to learn, as soon as I get close to 16 fame, I want to learn a better trick. And uh, get that will possibly generate even more fame and more money for me. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the Barter with Power card and add that to my hand. So now it's back to the air. Uh, between going to the Academy and the workshop, his priority, so let's go down his priority list. It was downtown, well, it was theater, if he's Ray. Um, he's not. It's downtown, which he's already done. The next prior item on the priority list is the Academy. So he's going to be sending his magician to the Academy He's going to get three plus one, four action points to spend. Okay, and again, he does the same thing he did when he went downtown. He converts the number of actions he can take, which in this case is four, at easy difficulty and converts that into a number of actual actions to take in the academy. And uh, so he has a table that says when you're playing easy with one action with the with uh, four action points, you take two actions, which makes sense because each action in the academy, all the actions in the academy cost two action points. So normally, if he were a human player with four action points, he'd be able to take two actions anyway. But um, the table doesn't always work that way. For example, with three action points at normal difficulty, he'd still take two actions. Uh, maybe you, you might imagine he might spend have been spending a shard, for instance, to get an additional action point. Whatever the case may be. Now, what are his priorities as far as taking actions in the academy? Well, his first priority is to take a secret. If uh, if he if the if his uh, protege doesn't already have two secrets. He has a two sp p spots for two secrets here. His protege gets one additional action point with one secret and, a, and another action point with two secrets. So he's going to grab a secret. He's going to take one of these secrets at random. Um, really at this point since uh, I didn't, uh, I'm not going to the academy so I don't even want to look to see which secrets he might be stealing from me. Uh, but he's going to take a secret as his first action. So he chose one randomly. You would flip a coin or roll a die or whatever. And now uh, his next priority, once he's taken a secret, is to um, possibly renovate a room in the academy if he has fewer banner, fewer equal or fewer banners to the number of banners I have. So when you renovate one of these dilapidated rooms in the academy, you generate four banners uh, for yourself in rounds one and two, three banners in rounds three and four, two banners in rounds five and six, and one banner in round seven. And whoever has the most banners at the end of the game will, will score eight points in a two-player game. So uh, since he is equal to me in banners, we each have zero now uh, in the academy then he is going to renovate. And uh, let's see, so how, how does he decide where to renovate? He renovates a room as follows. 
If the heir has zero to four coins, he selects the cheapest renovation where the heir's fame exceeds the fame threshold of the, of the renovation. If the heir has five or more coins, uh, so the heir has no coins, so he falls into the zero to four coins uh, selection. So he's going to choose the room that's cheapest to renovate, that costs the fewest number of coins. And then he's going to go ahead and spend up to nine coins to renovate that room. So what's the, so the, there's only four rooms that are available right now. In a two-player game, these other rooms are blocked off. These are classrooms. These are practice rooms. When you, you can place a, one of your markers in a classroom. By doing so, you're giving up the right to perform the trick in future rounds in exchange for getting income on a regular basis for that trick as long as you own it. Uh, essentially, you're teaching other magicians in the classroom how to perform your trick, and, they're, and you're getting paid uh, some annuity to do that. On the other hand, if you place a, a, a marker in a, a practice room, you're in one way or another enhancing that trick when you perform it or when you place a trick marker or something like that. So we'll see that as the, those cards start populating. But for now, what's the cheapest room uh, at level one where he can renovate? Well, here it's blurry, so I, my tool tips will tell us that um, for threshold one, you could pay six. You could pay six coins to get four fame. Down here, you can pay four coins for one fame. Over here, you can spend three coins for one fame. And down here, you can spend five coins for two fame. So the cheapest room is this one right here. This is the uh, cheapest practice room. That's where he's going to renovate. We already can see the area is renovating a practice room. There are four classroom, uh, four practice rooms at level one, at level two, at level three, and similarly four classrooms at each of the levels. He's going to pick one at random at level one. He is going to spend nine coins. He doesn't have any coins, so he's going to get this for free. He's going to basically get one fame for free by performing this action. Okay, so there's the so he's now up to seven fame. Here's the practice room that he placed, and and basically, if you place one of your trick markers here. This says that you may ignore up to three coins worth of components when determining if you meet the rec component requirements for the trick. And this one says that uh, you may orient your trick marker on a performance card any direction you want, ignoring uh, link circles and all those rules. You can basically break all the rules and just orient your trick marker any way you want, and by doing so, hopefully improve your chances of getting a link bonus. Okay, so he's done. Back to me. The only thing I have remaining to do is to put my magician in the theater. The magician has to go in the same day that I've claimed, Saturday night. That's when he's going to be performing. The only thing the heir can do now is place his apprentice in the workshop. As I said earlier, when he places in the workshop, he does nothing other than place his marker on the workshop space on his player board, uh, but doesn't do anything else. So that will end the placement phase and we'll move into the performance phase and you'll see how our performance actually works. So here we are at the performance phase. Now when there are multiple magicians are performing, uh, you perform in day order. So you would perform, any magician that's performing on Thursday would go first, Friday, Saturday, and then finally Sunday. There's only one performance scheduled, and that's Brian for Saturday night. So we're going to be performing Saturday night, and the old, there's only one performance that's going to be performed, and that's this one at the Riverside Theater, where uh, the heir will be a guest magician at my performance. He'll get to perform his trick. Then I'll perform my trick. We'll each, we'll each get the rewards for our respective tricks, but then I'll get a performer bonus. And remember, that's the bonus that's going to get doubled next round. We'll talk about that in a second, but let's proceed with the performance. So here we are. There's only one performance available. I don't get to make a choice here. 
So the heir is performing his pub and a bottle trick. That generates two fame and two coins for him. Um, it, normally, he would be under the modifier requirements that uh, any human player would normally get. So if he were human, on Sunday, he would get, uh, even though his the performance is on Saturday, he's scheduled for Sunday, so he gets a bonus of plus, he would get a bonus of plus one modifier, a plus one fame and plus one coin, if he were a human player. But the uh, heir ignores all modifiers for all days. So he just gets the two fame and the two coins he would normally get for performing pub and a bottle. And the audience applauds, and he's happy, and he leaves the stage. So his fame goes up from 7 to 9. His coins go from 0 to 2. Remember, the break-even point for him is when he gets to 10. And that's when he might start generating some additional fame at the end of the round. Okay, then we move on to my trick. So my trick, if you recall, uh, mind-reading trick doesn't generate fame or money, but it doesn't generate one shard. Now I'm performing on Saturday, and therefore I don't get a modifier on Saturday. So all I'm going to get from this trick performance is one shard. So I go from four to five. Okay. Now, now my performer bonus is calculated. The performer bonus is equal to one fame for every link that, is, that exists on the, car, on the performance. There are two links, this one here and this one here. It uh, doesn't care who created the links. It just counts the number of links. So I'm going to get two fame for the links. I get uh, three coins, remember, for having my manager backstage. So that's part of the performer bonus. And then finally, I get the bonus uh, that comes with the performance, which is one coin. So total, that's four coins and two fame. Uh, so there you go. Two fame for the links, three coins for my back, backstage manager, one coin for the performance card. I did pretty well there. Not quite as well as the... Um, uh, as the heir, but that's okay with me because it keeps me, uh, when, when you come to the uh, initiative, tur the turn order phase of next round, whoever has the lowest num amount of fame is going to be able to get, go first, and that's fine with me. I'm happy to be a little bit behind the air and still be able to go first. So we'll continue. Now there's a classroom phase. Uh, and a pay wages phase and a cleanup, and I'll go back and review that. Now, there's only a, the classroom phase would only have mattered if there were classrooms and there were trick trick um, markers of, uh, if you will, that were placed on those in those rooms. There are no rooms, there are no markers, so uh, that's not an issue. So there is nothing nothing happening in the classroom phase. The heir does not have to pay wages, but I do. And so I had to pay a total, I don't have to pay myself, but I have to pay one coin to my apprentice. Here's my new apprentice that I hired. I don't have to pay his wages. So that's one coin for this apprentice, one coin for this apprentice, uh, for the protege rather, and two coins for my manager. So that's a total of four coins and wages that I had to pay. Um, and if I go to the log, pay wages phase, Larry, one, oh. Oh, I'm sorry. The protege is free uh, until you start until he starts getting. Um, the, you know, there are no wages for the protege. Uh, you don't pay for him until you start getting some secrets. So essentially, when you add one secret, then you have to pay him one coin, but you don't get any additional action points. Once he has two secrets, you pay him uh, two coins in wages, and he gives you one additional action point. And when he has three secrets on him, you pay him two coins in wages, and he has a total of uh, three action points available. So I'm going to want to try to get to the academy this round and uh, try to get a secret for my uh, protege so I can start building up his uh, ability. 
last round, if you recall, I decided to go to the Dark Alley instead of the Academy, uh, just so I can add some cards to my hand. Okay, here's a, um, so uh, during cleanup, basically, all the, all the character markers came back to us. Any hires that were pending were hired, so there's my new apprentice that got recorded. Um, just the kind of general cleanup you would expect. So here's a reminder of the current prophecy. Remember, these prophecies rotated. So the one that was here slid into position, so all performer bonuses are going to be doubled this turn. And the prophecy for next round is going to be when renov renovating, score an additional 2, 4, or 6 fame, depending on the level of the renovation. So that's the next round. And the round after that will be Thursday and Sunday have no yield modifiers. That only affects me, of course. And after that, you may use enhanced character in the theater. So that's the order of the prophecies, unless somebody decides to rotate them at some point. Okay, so next, we go into round two's roll dice phase. So all of these dice are, re are rolling. We can see there that an apprentice will not be available to hire, but an engineer will, which uh, might be good for me, because I could potentially hire an engineer, so I might want to think about sending somebody downtown to do that. Uh, you can only learn a spiritual trick uh, this round, and five coins uh, is available twice at, uh, at the bank. Now, with the turn setup dice in rounds two through seven, this is the way they work. In round one, you roll all five of the turn setup dice to determine wh which spots are blocked off. In round two, you're going to re-roll the die, the die as it was positioned for the theater. You, in, in all the even-numbered rounds, in rounds two, four, and six, you're going to re-roll the theater die. Aside from that, you can choose one other die to re-roll uh, that you might want, where you might want to improve your chances, say, of uh, opening up let's say the plus two slot if it's currently blocked off or or just trying to improve the um, slot availability the particular location so I see that the Academy's die will currently has the plus two modifier slot blocked off I think that's probably the one that I want to re-roll, because I do want to go to the Academy, and I'd like to have the opportunity, at least, to possibly grab that slot. So I'm also going to go ahead and re-roll the, uh, the Academy die, in addition to the Theater die. So those are the two dice that are going to get re-rolled, and we'll see what, how they get affected. Well, it didn't, nothing changed at the Academy. Uh, and Sunday and Friday are blocked off at the theater, so that doesn't help me. I would have preferred to keep Sunday open with that plus, uh, plus one modifier. Uh, unfortunately, that was a kind of a lousy roll. All right, well, whatever. Uh, so as I said, I'm still behind on fame, so I'm going first. Do I want to spend one coin to uh, for uh, during the uh, advertising phase to score an additional two round? I will certainly do that. I have more coins than I had last round, so I'm doing a little better. And of course, the air will also advertise for free. So the score is still relatively the same, 11 to 9. Now I have the opportunity to earn another magician power if I want. Uh, so let's see what... Uh, what my options are here. Magoria's benefactor at the beginning of the place characters phase. Oh, so did I ever spend a shard? No, I never spent a shard last round. So, uh, yeah, so there's nothing to get back. So I didn't actually make use of this magician power. Uh, I don't even think, you know, I should have even thought about an opportunity to actually use spend a shard. And I could have gotten an action point. Um, I might have been able to spend that to re-roll that one da die downtown and see if I could have gotten a better something better than an apprentice. Well, that's that's water under the bridge. I didn't do it. So uh, whatever. Magoria's benefactor at the beginning of the place characters phase, 
you may two, pay two coins. If you do, maybe you may set one of the die to a result of your choice. Of course, that doesn't give you, doesn't guarantee that you're the one who's going to get to it first. But remember, I get to go first here. Uh, do I want to spend two coins for that benefit? Maybe. What's Path of Greatness? Oh, you may ignore the fame uh, threshold requirement when learning magician powers. That will help me down the road and would allow me, for example, to place a, uh, a level 36 magician power, even though I won't have 36 fame. I think I'm going to go ahead and invest in the future and add that power to my list of powers. Now, you'll see that I have seven, uh, a total of five shards. So I still have two. I, I gained an, an additional two shards this last round by performing, so I, have, I can spend up to two shards here without affecting my magician powers. Okay. All right, so where do I want to go assignment-wise? Well, I know I definitely want to perform. Now, I do have this durable components uh, that has to be placed on the magician if I want to get its benefit. They return one of your performed trick markers to its trick card instead of discarding it. I think I'm going to hold on to that until I have a better trick with a better trick marker that I might want to retain. Right now I've got only this simple trick. I've still got two trick markers on it. Um, and I don't think I want to waste durable components on that. So I'm just going to go ahead and send my magician to the theater normally. And uh, I do want us to go downtown and try to hire that, uh, that engineer. So I will uh, send, uh, who will I send? I'll send my apprentice downtown because he gives me one action point. There's a two action point slot. That'll give me the three slot, the three action points I need to hire the engineer. And since I'm going first, I don't have to worry about the uh, air going to the downtown and beating me to it. For my new apprentice, uh, I'll still plan, I have to figure out what trick I'm going to be learning. So I'm going to send him downtown uh, to, to Market Row. I'm not going to use Sparta with power just yet. Uh, I think I'll just send him I'll send him down to the market row to buy something or maybe order something. But I don't know what that something is yet. I have to look in the workshop and figure out what trick I'm going to want to uh, learn once my fame gets just a little bit higher. Get Once I get closer to the 16 threshold level. Uh, for my protege, I will go send, I will send the protege to the academy. Now that he only has one um, action point and the two action the plus two slot is taken up, so I'm only going to get two action points, assuming the uh, air doesn't beat me to it. If the air gets there first, then I'm going to have to spend a shard to get an action point, and I'll probably use that to get a secret. So what secrets are available here? If you place your protege in any non-theater location. On a zero action point slot, you collect a shard, and you do not have to pay wages for the protege. Oh, I like that one. Oh, that's what I'm going to have my eye on. Hopefully, I, uh, the air won't steal it from me. Okay, and my manager is definitely going to go backstage the theater again. That's going to help increase, continually increase the number of coins available to me. I want to keep my coin level up. Uh, so now I'm getting to go to five different locations, and remember that performer bonus is going to be doubled. Let's see if the air is going to the theater this turn. The air is ready to perform. He will be going to the theater. As you can see, his plan card sends his magician to the theater, sends his protege downtown, sends his um, first specialist to the dark alley, sends his next specialist, uh, sends his apprentice to the theater, and if he had another character and he had a theater um, 
Dark Alley card. I don't think he has any. He has no Dark Alley cards yet. He hasn't gone to the Dark Alley. But that, anyway, that's a non doesn't that point doesn't even matter because he still only has four characters. I, I I'm surprised he didn't get another character, but he learned he wanted to learn another trick last uh, round. So um, and if I grab the engineer before he does. Then he's not going to be getting enough. Then I'm still going to be keeping the number of characters he has to play with limited to four. So that's that's good for me. Okay, place characters phase. So contested wise, uh, we're both going downtown. We're both going to the theater. I am not going to the dark alley. I think I want to be sure that I get that engineer because if he goes to downtown. He's grabbing it, and and then I I'll be stuck uh, because I uh, because I also would have, would then get the plus zero slot, and I wouldn't be able to do anything there. So I wouldn't even bother sending my apprentice and paying his wages because I wouldn't be able to get the three action points I needed uh, in order to perform an action there. So I am going downtown with my apprentice into the plus two action point slot. I have three action points available to me and I am going to um, and I'm going to hire that engineer. And that will turn this die into an X so the heir will not have an opportunity to hire somebody this round. And I'll get my new engineer at the end of the round. Okay, so now it's the heir's turn. So uh, downtown is not uh, contested. Really, the only contested location is the theater, because both of us are placing non-magician characters in the theater. He is he's going dark alley this turn. He's not going to the academy. Uh, so... Um, he will be going to the theater, and because he's ready to perform, his priority is to choose the earliest possible day. So he is going to place his uh, character on backstage on Thursday night. He doesn't. He ignores modify. Remember, I said he ignores performance modifiers for Thursday, Friday, and Sunday, and Saturday. He also ignores the action point modifiers in the theater as well. So this plus one action point isn't going to affect him at all. Uh, so by pr placing the protege in the theater, um, he will get one action point. He'll be able to spend one. Uh, he'll be able to place one trig marker. So there he goes. He should be going right on Thursday night. He's going to place one trick marker. He's going to place the trick marker that belongs to the trick that generates the most fame for him. That would be Rabbit from the Top Hat, which generates three fame, as opposed to the two fame from Pub in a Bottle. He will be looking for the best link bonus. It's an optical trick. Uh, if we look at performance, a new performance has been added. I guess I should have pointed out. So this is the one from last, uh, last round that got moved over to the right. Now, when you perform your tricks, uh, all your trick markers get returned. Uh, get sent to are spent and go to the supply back to the supply but that doesn't apply to the air his trick markers go back to his tricks so if you look at his player board you'll see that he his his well he, he didn't do you didn't do anything with rabbit from the top hat last round but last round he did spend one of his pub and a bottle trick markers but he, he got it right back at the end of the round as opposed to my situation oops as opposed to my situation, um, where I permanently spent one of my mind reading trick markers and I'm down to two. All right, so back to him. So he's placing this trick marker. This is a an optical trick. He's going to be looking for the best link bonus he can get, and that would be right here for an optical. He's going to land, land it right here and get. A link bonus right here. So this is, this performance card is simply the mirror image of this one, except it generates one fame while this one generated one coin. All right, so that's what I expect him to do. Yep, he gets one fame for that. 
He had only one action point to spend. The table says with one action point at easy mode, you only place one trick marker, and that's what he did. And now it's back to me. So now I have to make a decision about what trick I'm interested in purchasing down the road. I better start by looking in the workbook and figuring out what my plans are, potentially. Um, okay, so, so these boxes, remember, tell me how many components, not the number of components, but where I'm missing what num what type of components I'm missing. Now, I'm not interested in level one tricks. I'm interested in level two tricks. Uh, so this one's out of reach right now. Uh, this one, if I can get some saws and some wood, I can possibly uh, learn that trick. Remember, I, what trick I learn is going to be limited to what dice are available and, and to what degree I can change those dice. Uh, bullet Catch here, which was also featured in the Prestige. Um, two oil cans, ropes, and some metal. So there's not a whole lot of synergy there with the tricks I've, uh, with the components I've already purchased. In the uh, spiritual group, Pepper's Ghost requires uh, some disguises and some saws. Uh, escape tricks. Uh, prison break requires disguises and metal. And uh, some ropes, some animals, some wood. Wow. Uh, a little bit all over the board here. I think wood was a common yeah, wood seems to be pretty common here. I think I'm going to order some wood. I'm going to buy some wood while it's available. And maybe I'll order some... Maybe I'll order some saws. I'll order some disguises. Wait. Yeah, this one requires... Pepper's Ghost requires a disguise and some... So I could order some saws. I'm I'm just planning for for the future here, uh, for next round. Really, I'm not in any hurry to buy these things. All right. Well, nothing's contested at this point, so I'm just going to go ahead and send my apprentice to the market row. I'm going to have three action points available to spend. So let me start, and I could, remember, spend a shard for an additional action point. I'll contemplate that. Let's order some disguises. So now I can pl or place or orders for stuff to come in in these slots here, and, and next round when they get delivered, or at the end of this round rather, they'll get shifted over and kick out whatever used to be here in the, in the same relative position. So I think my plan is to buy some wood this round while it's available, and I'm going to make wood unavailable next round by ordering some disguises and placing them here. Okay, so uh, let's keep my options open. Let's order some disguises. That's going to cost me one action point, so that's going to knock me down to two. Let's order saws. I may not make use of any of this stuff, but I've got the action points available, so I might as well spend them. Let's spend an action point. Let's spend a shard for one action point. So now I'm back up to two, and I'm going to make a note on my persistence reward card, a magic power card here that I have spent a shard. And uh, when, I per if, when I do perform, I will get the shard back later at the end of the round. So um, I've spent a shard, but I'm, I'm going to get it back anyway. And, I've, and with those two action points, 
I am going to buy, I think I'm going to buy wood. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and buy th three pieces of wood. Now that would normally cost three coins, but I can use one action point to barter and reduce the total price by one coin for each action point I spend. So I'm going to spend, effectively I've taken that shard that I spent and traded it for an action point and traded it to barter down the price by one coin. So now the coin, I'm going to be able to buy three pieces of wood for two coins. And uh, I need that one last action point to do the purchase. So now I'm going to buy, the, buy this stuff. And I don't want to put it in my manager's board. I want to save this when I buy, for when I buy, I buy either saws or disguises so that I can get one extra component for free using my manager's ability. So I'm not going to put, add these components to my manager's board. Okay, if you probably notice there that uh, there's my three wood in addition to the, to the two panes of glass I have and, of course, the two rope that I have over here on my manager board. Okay, so now it's the heir's turn. Um, if you recall, uh, the, uh, the priority for the heir, uh, all things being equal, was to go downtown. So he is going to send his apprentice downtown with one, I'm sorry, his protege downtown with one action point into the plus zero slot, which will give him one action point. And his table says that with one action point in easy mode, he gets to use one die. He is not interested in learning another trick, and he can't hire a character, so I think he's just going to take money from the bank, the highest coin they can get using the best die. That's what I would expect. Using one die, I think he's going to grab five coins. Yep, he's grabbing five coins. That gets X'd out. His balance, his total coins now are up to seven, getting closer to being able to get some, a pair, uh, you know, two extra points during the pay wages phase. Remember, for every ten coins he can spend, he gets two points. So now it's back to me. I think I will uh, now go to the academy with my protege. I have two action points available. Spending a shard for one, you know, having three action points doesn't help because all actions in the academy cost two action points. And if you recall, I had my eye on grabbing this uh, uh, secret to add to my uh, protege of not having to pay wages. Now that, that will save me from having to pay one coin in wages this round, but as I add additional secrets and his wage requirement goes up to two and then to three, I'm going to not have to pay for him. I'm going to still keep him for free, so that's, that's going to save me some coins down the road. Unfortunately, that's the only action I can perform, and now the heir is going to the dark alley. So his priorities, again, uh, are for placement are downtown, then the academy, uh, then the market row. He's not going to any of those places. Then the dark alley, and finally the workshop. So he's going to the dark alley. He, ha he will have four action points. With four action points in the dark alley, um, dark alley, four action points, easy mode. He takes two cards, and he's, his priority for taking cards in the dark alley are he takes whatever he has the least of in his hand. Right now, he doesn't have any cards in his hand. Um, he will take his priority is to draw theater cards, then downtown cards, then dark uh, market row cards, and then finally workshop cards. Uh, so he's going to take a uh, a theater card and a downtown card. He doesn't use them for their abilities. He uses them to get one extra action point to spend. 
um, and only when his plan card says to actually use a dark alley card. So he's going to take new twist, I would expect, and what was the next priority? Uh, downtown. He's going to take new twist and interest, I believe. New twist and interest. Okay. And now it's back to me. So you can see the, by and large, the air plays pretty smoothly, but you, you have to look up this table each time, and then presumably, hopefully, there will be a reference, an easy reference card, or some, some user will create an easy reference card with all these tables so that you can easily convert from action points and difficulty setting into um, um, act, true actions to take. And... Um, uh, and it can be a little tricky with, with priorities for placing trick markers in the theater and maybe some other priorities as well. But uh, eventually you get the hang of it. Of course, it's, it's nice when I'm playing with my computer program because it does all the mental tedium and I don't have to think about it as long as he does, as long as this program works the way it's supposed to work. Okay, so uh, back to me. I guess it's time for me to place my manager backstage at the theater. That will give me two action points to spend on Saturday night. That will allow me to place two trick markers. So I'll be able to place the mind reading trick on one performance and the other mind reading trick on another performance. I'm still stuck with only one trick. Okay, so let's take one of these trick markers. Remember, this is a spiritual trick, so I'm looking to try to generate a link with the spiritual symbol, which is uh, this symbol here in the in the corner. Uh, I could get it. Oh yeah, I can get a shard link right here. So that would give a shard to me, a shard to the air and it would generate one fame for or one coin for me. I think I would probably take the fame at this point. I probably should have taken the fame last time because I'm generating with my manager. I'm generating coins. I should have realized that I'm generating coins backstage when I perform. So uh, I kind of, the score should be 12 to 10. I should have taken the fame and not the coin. Uh, probably a mistake, but that's, again, water under the bridge. So anyway, I am going to uh, create this shard link. And I'm going to take the fame and narrow this lead from 12 to 10. I have one additional action point to spend. Uh, so I'm going to, now again, I can't place this on this trick marker. I have to go over to this trick marker. And, oh, if I reverse this, if I flip this around so that the spiritual symbol is in this circle pointing down, then my optical marker matches up with this trick marker pre-printed on the card, and that's going to generate me another link. Not a shard link, mind you, just another link, but it's, that's another fame for me. So I'm definitely taking the fame, and now I've narrowed the lead to 12 to 11. And that's all my actions. Back to the air. The air only has the magician remaining to be placed, and I think that's my situation as well. And I am going to place my magician, and we are both performing this turn. Now, the only performance that the air could perform is this one, because you can't perform on a, 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 on a card where he doesn't have any trick markers. So this is the trick marker that's going to get performed. So I have not yet used my Yoruba Spirit Master special ability, remember, that allows me to spend a shard to dictate where which performance the... Um, the air will, will use. Uh, that's only going to come into play when he's got trick markers spread across multiple cards. So maybe that'll happen a little bit later on in the game. For now, he's going to get uh, 
uh, three fame and a coin from this trick, I'm going to get uh, one shard from this trick, and he's going to get two fame. Uh, he's going to remember he's going to double his performance bonus, so he's going to get uh, two fame for the link, two fame for the performance, and um, he doesn't have any back. Does, who's he have backstage? Uh, only an apprentice, so he doesn't get anything for the apprentice. All right, so let's unpause and process the uh, performance. So this should be uh, three fame and a coin. It is. So he goes up to 15 fame, eight coins. Then as a guest performer, I perform my mind reading trick, which gives me a shard. And he's going to get his double bonuses. So he's if, normally he would get two fame for links and one thing for the performance card for a total of three fame, but because of this prophecy that doubles performer bonuses, he's going to get a total of six fame. He should shoot up to 21. Yep. And now I'm performing on Saturday night. I only have one trick. I'm going to get a shard for that trick. I do, and then my a performer bonus is not as nice as the performer bonus for the uh, air. So I'm getting one fame for links, three coins for, for my manager, one coin for the performance. So that's one fame and four coins, which is doubled to two fame and eight coins. Wow, money is not my problem here. Nothing happening in the classroom phase, pay wages, clean up. So uh, let's review the log again. Uh, I, had, I, got, I hired my new engineer at the end of the round. Uh, again, I paid two coins for two apprentices and two coins for my, um, uh, my manager, but I didn't have to pay for my protege because of the secret. Secret 9 lets you avoid having to pay wages for your protege. So now my player board should be bigger because now I have a manager in addition to, um, I'm sorry, I have an engineer in addition to a manager. Remember the engineer's special ability is that when you uh, get a trick and prepare it, you get one extra trick marker than you would otherwise normally get when you prepare that trick. But of course I have to pay, I'll have to pay more wages for my uh, engineer as well. So my pay wages phase is going to, uh, is going to hurt my purse a little bit more. But uh, anyway, now we're in round three. The current prophecy when renovating score an additional two, four, or six fame. Now I'm getting, the, the air has already surpassed the 16 fame threshold mark. And I am just a little bit shy of it, but if I spend some of my money to advertise, I'm going to be really close. So for all intents and purposes, I'll consider myself to, to also be in the 16 threshold. That is an important threshold for purposes of learning tricks. Now we've got to see how the dice roll turns out. So we've got an escape trick. We have a mechanical trick. No specialist, but there is an apprentice. Four coins available in the bank. Now, this is an odd number round, so I can re-roll any two of the setup dice that I didn't re-roll last round. Last round, if you recall, I rolled these two dice, so I have to re-roll two of these dice. And frankly, I don't really see any reason to have to re-roll them, but I must re-roll them. I don't really have a choice. Um, so I think I'll re-roll the market row. I do have plans to go to the market. You'll notice that my orders now have come in. So everything that I order is now over here on this side. I do have plans to go to the market row. I hate to re-roll that and risk messing up that plus two action point slot. Um... And uh, I don't know if I have plans to go to the dark alley specifically, but I think uh, def definitely I'm going downtown. And I'm still, oh, 
Yeah, I'm still in uh, first. I've still got to go first, so I, I'm going to leave downtown alone, and I'm going to re-roll these two dice. So I'm re-rolling the Market Row and Dark Alley. Oh, Market Row, the plus two action point slot got taken up. But uh, not the, the plus two is still available in the dark alley. Hmm. Well, I'm definitely spending a coin to advertise and get two fame. The air, of course, will do so as well. And, of course, I can learn a new power. And remember, this ability says I can ignore the fame threshold when, when learning new magician powers. So... Whereas I would normally have to spend a coin to effectively claim that I had 16 fame, uh, I can now ignore that ability. So now I want to really pick a nice ability uh, to make use of. So let's start from the bottom and look up. So wonder of technology, when you use the prepare action on a trick, you may choose to spend one additional action point. If you do, you receive all of your available trick markers for that trick. Well, that's the difference between three and four on my uh, three and five on mind reading, because uh, there are five available trick markers. Um, but I do have plans to try to learn a new trick this turn. Huh. Well, what's stolen secrets? When you perform, which I'm definitely going to be doing this round, choose an opponent's trick marker in the, your performance. That trick's yields are paid to you as well as to its owner. You may only choose a trick with a 16 threshold or lower. Hmm. He's going to, for the time being, he's got better tricks than I do. Uh, so I th and he's probably going to learn want to learn a new trick as well this round. I think maybe that's the one. What's network of supporters? During the return characters phase, you receive two fame for each of your specialists, one fame for each of your apprentices. Well, uh, oh, that. Oh, the problem is that that can only go in the top slot, and I don't have enough shards to fund that slot. So I can't do that. So I think I'm going to go with Stolen Secrets. When you perform, earn the uh, fame and or earn the yield of uh, one of my opponents. That way that when the heir performs a trick during my performance, he won't actually uh, score anything for it because I'll score the same thing he does and we'll basically... Uh, our, 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 uh, our points will and and money our coins will increase uh, in a, at a similar rate. So anyway, I think I'm gonna go with stolen secrets. Gonna put that in the third slot. Uh, oh, I have to tell it that I'm. Uh, it doesn't know that I've got this special ability, so I have to hold down the control key while dragging to let me force it into where I uh, where I want that to be. Okay, so now uh, I've used this ability to place this um, special ability. And, of course, this is only going to help me if the air actually performs this round. But I would expect odds are that he will. Well, he, although he performed last round, he, uh, what does he shuffle? He shuffles two setups that are perform. Oh, uh, no, I don't think he's performing this round. I think he's definitely setting up. Yeah. So, uh, maybe this isn't the one I want to place. I don't think I really have... What's flexible planning? That doesn't excite me that much. That's not exciting. That's not that... Uh, I'll just leave it be, although I'm probably not going to get the benefit for this from this round. Oh, by the way, I've got to take this shard off this card and add it to my shard collection. So now I've got eight, eight shards in total as opposed to seven. All right, so now it's uh, assignment phase time, round three of seven. <laughs> So 
So now I think it is time for me to use durable components. At the end of the performance phase, you may return one of your performed trick markers to its trick card instead of discarding it. I plan to hopefully learn a new trick this round and prepare it. So that means I'm going to send somebody to the workshop as well. But I'm going to put this on my magician. I need to get downtown to learn a trick. Since I get to go first and there is a plus two action slot available, I will simply send one of my apprentices downtown. Oh, because this prophecy is in place. When we're renovating score an additional two, four, six fame, I'm going to be sending, I'll send, let's see, there's a plus one action slot in the academy. If I don't get that, I can always spend a shard to get the two action points I need. So I'll send my apprentice, other apprentice, to the academy. I now have to buy some of these components. I have to figure out what trick I'm going to get first. So this is going to come first. I'll pick a trick, then I'll figure out what components to buy. But I will send, I'll, I'll, I'll take my barter with power, assign that to the protege. Then I'm going to only get two action points to spend, but I might spend a shard. Not sure. Um, so now for my big guys over here, my manager and my engineer. Uh, I want my manager backstage for the money. So I'll send him to the theater. Uh, well, the engineer gives you a shard if he's backstage at the theater. Or she, it's a, or she I should say. My apologies. Uh, no, uh, maybe I shouldn't make her a, a male, to be fair. Yeah, let's make her a male. Ooh, he's a, he's a smarmy looking dude. Uh, and she's a little weird for 19th century with the black and gray hair or black and white hair. That's a little odd for 19th century England. Um, but this guy looks a little suspicious. I don't know if I like the look of him. He actually looks like one of the characters from The Prestige. I'm going to go, I'm going to stick with her. She, she's, she's cool. So we're going to send her to Dark Alley. Oh, no, 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 workshop. We have to send her to the workshop to prepare all the tricks that we plan to. Um, so I'm going to need one trick marker to prepare this trick. That the cost of preparing, the action point cost to prepare the trick is the number that's inside the action points inside the trick marker space. So this means I have to spend one action point for this to prepare this trick. I don't know what trick I'm going to be getting downtown and how many action points I may need for that. So again, I may have to spend a shard in my workshop if I want to prepare both tricks, depending upon what the, shard, what the action point requirements are. But I'm pretty good here. I'm all filled up. I expect that the air is going to um, do a setup this round, if my calculations are correct. Yep, he's doing a setup. Place characters, I get to go first. So as far as contested locations are concerned, uh, we're both going downtown. We're both going to the academy. And I am not going to the dark alley. So downtown and academy are what are, I think I want to get downtown. I, I want to get there first, as I have done in the earlier two rounds as well. So I am definitely going to go downtown to the plus two action slot, three action points to spend. And I'm going to learn a trick. Now I can, I can learn an escape trick. Or I can learn a mechanical trick. So in the escape category, I would need a disguise and metal. That's out of the question. Uh, well, I, metal is available. 
Yeah, metal's still available, so I could potentially learn that trick. Prison break. It's expensive with the, all the disguises. And, uh, not too bad, especially if I put the disguise. All right, I'm, con I'm con considering prison break. That's three fame and three coins. Zigzag lady. Oh, there's no oil cans available, so that's out of the question. Walled. There are no padlocks available, so that's out of the question. So only prison break on the escape side. And on the mechanical side, sawing a magician in half, one fame and five coins. I would need saws and I'd need wood, obviously, this to uh, saw an assistant in half. The return is not great, although it gives me a, a whole slew of coins to play with. Does give me three trick markers, which is something to make note of, and it only costs me one action point to prepare. Bullet catch, I don't have oil cans. So it's between this one, sawing a mag magician in half, and prison break. Saws and wood. Versus disguises and metal. This also requires one. Uh, hmm. I tell you, money is such a. Th and I want, I want. I have a lot of money. I, I plan to spend at the academy to renovate rooms. I, I really think I want the money. I, I think I'm going to go with the sawing magician in half. I think that's my plan. So I am going to learn a mechanical trick. And I am going to choose sawing a magician in half. Oh. Oh, I bought the wood last time. I only need to buy the saw. Oh, I have to buy three saws. Uh, who? Okay. So I'll have to buy two saws, put them on my manager board to have three saws. But I'm going to go with sawing a magician in half. Uh, now, I don't have the 16 fame threshold, so I have to pay, make, pay the difference of one coin, and I will do that. Do I want to add the trick to my engineer's board and, and possibly get an extra trick marker? Uh, that's interesting. Yeah, I think I will. Uh, I forget how many trick markers I get normally. I normally get three when I prepare it. That'll give me four trick markers. Okay, so we're getting a little ahead of ourselves here. The, um, why didn't, oh, the academy is still contested. That's why the heir is going to the academy. Placing his engineer in the second slot, that's three action points. In the academy, three action points at easy level gets one action. He is going to take another secret at random. Doesn't matter what it is, it only affects the number of action points he gets to. So now he's not getting any more secrets. He now has two secrets that he's gotten for his protege. So his protege is worth three action points for him going forward at this point. All right, so now it's back to me. And there are no contested locations at this point. That's good. So it doesn't really matter where I go next. I guess we're going to go to the market row and buy the saws that I need. Oh, and I could do that partially with the barter with power ability that where I can spend buy four coins worth of components for free. Oh, nice. So I can get those saws for free. That's 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 really nice. Okay. So we're going to this slot down in the market row. That'll give me two action points to spend. One from my apprentice, one from my is that Am I going to want to spend a shard? 
I definitely want to use the ability the, of the dark alley card and not the action point. So I'm not going to use that. Do I want to spend a shard? I think I will. So I'll spend a shard for another action point, and I'll record that on my persistence reward card so I can get it back later when I perform. So I am going to, uh, in the market row, so I'm going to buy, I'm going to use my barter with power ability. To, spend, to buy four coins worth of components for free. And I'm going to do that. I'm going to basically buy two saws. Yes. So that's actually two saws. Well, that's the first saw that effectively is two saws on the manager board. But did not buy it. But I, wait a minute. How many saws do I need? I need three saws and three pieces of wood. So I need to buy another saw. So for the other two, for the other freebie, I'm going to buy another saw and bump it up to three. Okay. So now, yeah, let's buy one disguise for now. This might be a mistake. I might, This may come back to bother me, but I'll, I'll buy one disguise for three coins. And maybe I should get my panes of glass up to three. Let me look in the workshop again. So this requires two panes of glass. Two panes of glass. Skeleton dance requires three panes of glass. Metamorphosis, three panes of glass. I don't know yet what trick I'm going to... Oops. I don't know what trick I'm interested in. Buried Alive, uh, since Revenge requires three panes of glass. Mutilation requires two panes of glass. I don't know, maybe it's a waste to buy a third pane of glass. Vanishing Elephant, but that requires padlocks and animals. I'm more apt to, to go to, with mutilation where I need uh, the one, oh, well, look, one disguise, two saws, two paints of glass, and three fabric. Oh, darn. Uh, fabric's not available any longer. Um, I don't know. Should I buy another thing? I, I mean, I've, I'm not short of money. I, I, I'm going to buy one more pane of glass. I mean, I, I could also buy three sheets of metal, just in case, too. I've got plenty of slots available for components. Uh, this is only cost me one coin. I, I'm just going to spend one coin just for my third pane of glass. I don't want to have to worry about it. So, that's that. Back to the Back to the air. So uh, where's the air going next? Probably uh, downtown to learn a new trick at, at Fame Threshold 16. He's going to learn an escape trick at random. Now the, his protege is worth three action points. Uh, that, uh, so with three action points downtown at the easy level... One die. Okay. So he is learning an escape trick at random. He's learning the wolf cage trick. Okay. So he gets it. He automatically gets it prepared. Only one trick marker. Note. That's interesting. He orders oil cans, animals, and and well, not. Uh, he puts metal on his shopping list, though. Though it is currently available in the market row. Uh, he hasn't gone to the market row yet, though. And this wolf cage uh, pays him three fame, three coins, and a shard. That's pretty good. All right. Back to me.
I guess I should be preparing my tricks. So let's go to put my engineer in the workshop. I have two action points I need to spend. That's what I need to prepare both my tricks. So I'm going to prepare uh, my um, sawing magician in half trick. That'll get me three, four trick markers there because it's on my engineer board. So I got an extra bonus trick marker. And I will prepare, re-prepare my mind reading trick so I can get three more trick markers put back there. Remember, we now have three. Um, we now have three performance cards up. Here's the first one from round one. Here's the second one from round two. Another Riverside Theater comes out for round uh, for this round. Um, and this looks sort of like an up down, upside down version of either one of these. Um, so lots of possibilities. The uh, the the bonus here is uh, one one coin. All right. So the heir is placing the magician in his in the dark alley. That's going to get him five action points. He will flip a coin to determine whether he rotates the prophecies. Um, so current prophecy is re renovating um, score an additional 246 fame. We haven't addressed that yet, but we will soon. Thursday and Sunday have no yield modifiers. He might rotate that out of the way. And then he already owns a one of these. Oh, oh, he already owns a uh, a dark alley theater and a dark alley downtown so he'll probably get one of each of these when he goes to the dark alley I would expect oh he is rotating the prophecies Ooh, drawing two dark alley cards I expect he'll get one of these so now he has one of each type let's set up uh, my tricks Hmm. So why do I want the mo uh. I guess I'm going to go on with Saturday plus zero action points. That means I can set up two tricks and I can't spend a shard at the theater. So I'm only setting up two tricks. So one of each trick marker is uh, is getting placed. Um, we're going to start with my sawing assistant in half. Hopefully I can generate a link trick. So I've got to make sure the mechanical symbol, the gear, is inside a circle. Oh, there's a link. Yep, I'll go with that. Now that's uh, because that's a 16 threshold trick. I get two fame or two coins. I'm going to go with the two fame. All right, and now. Do I want now? I can I can place one of these trick markers on another performance card, but since uh, since the air is not performing this turn, I think I'm probably better off placing one of my mind reading tricks on the same card, so that I can just boost. Yeah, I'm just going to boost my performance of this card. Uh, now this is a uh, a spiritual. Oh, yep, there's a link right there. So this is beautiful. Really lining this up to be a nice tra a nice performance for later this round. Now that's another one fame because this is my lower level trick. Okay, back to the air. The air is left to place his apprentice in the workshop. Doesn't do anything. 
And I still am going to go to the academy with my apprentice. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to spend a shard. Because you, everything in the academy costs two action points. Let me record that. Oh, I already spent a shard earlier. And I can only put a maximum of one shard in this card. So can't do anything about I can't get that shard back. So now with two shards, I want to take advantage of this prophecy and score a boatload of fame if I can. So uh, let's see. Six coins. Now my threshold is well into 16, so I can pay th eight coins for seven fame. But was it's doubled, right? No, an additional two, four, or six. Uh, so basically, I can pay eight coins for eleven fame. Wow, that's amazing. Maybe I just, well, let's see what my other options are. Five coins for effectively seven fame. That's not so nice. And seven coins for nine fame. I like the look of this. Eight coins. That's all the coins I have for 11 fame. Wow. Um, I just got to make sure I, I'm willing to spend all my money. Yeah, let's just do it. Uh, I'm going to be getting uh, lots of coins from my manager and my performer. I'm going to definitely be able to co cover my wages. I think I'm okay. So I'm going to go and shoot the moon here. 11 fame. Don't often get that many opportunities. Now this is round three. I'm only going to get three banners for this. So I'm going to be behind still on banners. I'm going to have to try to make up for that. Yeah, I'm going to I want to let the threshold two. Now you could now normally there'd be four cards here, but I don't you could see that my availability of of cards is kind of slim and slim and dim. So I'm going to go with this I'll go with this card. All right, so look. Wow. 29 to 23. Now I'm now all of a sudden I'm broke, but I'm no longer in trailing in second place. But that doesn't that means I'm not going to be able to go first from now on. So, but I couldn't pass up that the prophecy point to get an extra four fame. That that was that was really nice. And I'm catching up on banners as well. Okay, I still have the durable performance uh, components here. So I'm going to go and place my, um, now I, uh, I'll, I'll return one of my perform trick markers to its trick card after I perform. And that's probably going to be the uh, Sawing a Magician half trick uh, marker that I'm going to recover for that. Okay, we go to the performance phase. Okay, here we are. So this, uh, this is my Sawing Magician in half. One fame and five coins. My mind reading trick gets me a shard. It's nice to keep those shards coming in. And my bonus, I've got two links. That's two fame, three coins for the manager, one coin for the, for the performance card. Wow, 32 to 23. And Dark Alley Durable Components lets me recover one of my trick cards, uh, trick markers from the performance card. Which one? I, I think I really want to get the better trick marker back. Um, yeah, there's no question about that. So I'll take the heart trick. Pay wages. Yeah, I had plenty of money as expected. Three coins to spare. 
Uh, so now my trick marker count for sawing my magician in half is back up to four, but my mind reading trick, of course, got spent, so I've got only two trick markers remaining there. Current prophecy, you may use enhanced character in the theater. Well, that might come in handy. Um, roll dice. Ooh, the nice assortment of tricks to learn. Uh, what did I want to learn? Uh, mechan oh, I learned a mechanic. Uh, I'm almost set. I learned my trick. So <laughs> I'm not ready for, th uh, although I'm getting close to 36 fame. Wow. And when I advertise, I might actually get a 36 fame trick. I could, uh, if, I, if I can get enough money for it. Um, I'm thinking about it. Okay, which die do I want to re-roll here? Uh, I guess uh, I guess the Academy. It's an even numbered round, so I had to re-roll the theater. So the theater Sunday slot is now open, as is the Saturday slot. Wow! If I want to advertise now, I've got to blow all my all my money. But I'm so far in the lead that I'm tempted to avoid advertising. Yeah, I'm going to pass on advertising. Of course, the air advertised. Uh, uh, and and I, I, sh I didn't notice, by the way. I didn't point out when you advertise, you take one of your magician poster cards and you just put it out here on the board to indicate that you you have advertised. There are a couple cards, I think, in the different decks or magician powers that um, are affected by... Um, uh, whether you advertised or not, I am going to pass. I am not going to advertise. I'm, I think I may need the. I, I'm, I'm not. Just, I'm, I don't want to be broke going into this round. So I'm going to pass on on. The, and now it's the assignment phase. I can learn a new magician power. Uh, but honestly, I don't have enough. Sh well, I. Oh. I kind of lost. I lost, I must have spent a shard at some point that bumped this magician power out. This magician, I gotta get my shard back from that magician power. This one, that's fine. I guess I'm gonna put stolen secrets back up here now that I've got, oh yeah, hold it. Hold down the control key. I can ignore the fame, even though this is a 36 threshold uh, power, this power lets me ignore the fact that I don't have 36 fame yet. Though I would have been able to pay the difference, except that the difference between 36 and 32 is four coins, and I'd only have three. Um, hopefully, the air will perform this round. Okay, so I got a lot of characters. I don't have any dark alley cards. That, that's a shame. But now I have prepared tricks, so I don't have to worry about going to the workshop either. So I think I probably will go back to the dark alley. I think I definitely want to continue performing. So I'm going to send my theater. Well, I'm going to send my magician to the theater and my manager to the theater backstage. Hopefully to grab Sunday. Um, we have another performance card. A, a fancier theater has come into play. The Grand Magorian. So you'll notice uh, this has more possibilities for interesting arrangements of link circles. Uh, link, yeah, link circles, and also its return is to fame. Okay, so I've got my guys going to the theater. I do want to... Uh, I think I do want to go to the dark alley, so I'll send one of my apprentices there. Do I have any reason to go back to Market Row? Well, let me think ahead again. I'm close to 36 fame. Disguise. 
two saws, two panes of glass. I need fabric. Fabric's not even available. I have to special order it. Uh, what are the spiritual tricks and mechanical tricks? So mechanical tricks, I'm, I would need uh, cogs for the horror saws. Can't get padlock. So they're, they're, those components aren't even available. And what was the other one? Spiritual? Skeleton dance? No, cogs aren't available. Huh. Well, truth of the matter is, I don't have the money for to get myself up to 36 fame at the moment. So, uh, I guess I'm not going to be learning a new trick. But should I grab some metal? Uh, you know, I don't have that much money to spend. I probably should be doing this off camera. <laughs> Uh, what if I sent an apprentice to the market row? What if I sent my... What if I ignored downtown altogether? I do want to get back to the academy. I can send my protege there. And plan on grabbing this plus two slot. Well, I know I don't have to go to the workshop, so I might as well assign everything else to my characters. And I don't have to go to the market row, and therefore I could pass at the last minute and to choose not to go to the market row, and therefore not have to pay that apprentice. So that's always an option. So at least this way, I've got I've cut all my bases covered pretty much. Yeah, all right, let's see what the heir is going to be doing. He is setting up again. He is not performing. He is, uh, and he still only has four characters, but he's got a shot at getting another, of getting an apprentice here downtown, which I'm not particularly interested in taking from him at this point. But I might do it to spot. No, he's going to go, he's going to go first. He's got, turn order advantage here. He's probably going to go downtown right away. And he's going to grab that apprentice, I think. Um, he's not ready for a Fame 36 trick yet. Okay. Place characters phase. So, uh, my program knows I'm not going first. It's giving me the, the uh, option to possibly go first because it doesn't know if I have a special magician power. I don't, so I'm just going to proceed. The air will go first, and I think the air is going downtown to grab that apprentice. Oh, except that's three, that's five action points. So downtown, five action points, easy mode, two dice. So his first, I don't think he's going to buy, he's not going to learn a trick. He's, he's got two, oh, he wants to have two tricks at his current fame th uh, level. And he only has one 16. Yeah, he's going to learn in the fourth trick. He's going to learn another. I think he's going to learn another a threshold 16 trick. And then he's going to hire an apprentice. And he took the spiritual. And he's learning which trick? Pepper's Ghost. And then he hires the apprentice, as I expected. Well, now, that limits my options a little bit. All right, I think I'm going to go. I don't think anything's content, contested right now, is it? Oh, the Academy's contested. And the Market Rose contested. Hmm. really doesn't matter if I go to the market row first or second. His priority is to go to the academy before the market row. 
So maybe I should go to the academy first. I, I'm just going to go to the market row. I think I'm just going to order stuff right now. Okay. So what was that I needed? I think, uh, well, again, I don't know what dice are going to come up. But I think it wasn't a cogs and, let's see, skeleton dance required cogs and three panes of glass. I never got that extra pane of glass. Uh, sorry. Uh, horror saws requires cogs. I think I want to order cogs. Sisson's Revenge needs a mirror and more glass and padlocks and uh, mutilation required fabric. So maybe I'll order cogs and fabric with my two action points. Yeah, let's do that. Uh, so let's order some more fabric because we, unfortunately we used to have fabric, but the disguisers replaced it. So let's add fabric again. We'll I don't care about the disguises anymore. That's one action point to order that. And then I'll order cogs as my other action point. I don't think, oh, you know what? He, The air is also coming here. But he had no reason to order cogs. So, yeah, I'm going to order cogs. Okay, back to the air. The air is going, placing the engineer in the academy. Uh, that is the contested location. He is not taking, oh, yeah, he's not taking secrets anymore. He's got the two secrets. So that's really not an issue. So, um what does he do uh, in the academy? Uh, he's going to have, um, try, I just like to work it out with you ahead of time instead of just having my program do it automatically just so you can see how this works. So the air is putting the engineer, that's two action points in the academy, that's going to give him four action points. Um, four action points at easy mode means two actions. And if the air has equal or fewer banners, he doesn't. He has more banners, so he's, he doesn't renovate. Instead, in even number of rounds, he puts a trick marker in a classroom before, in an odd, odd numbered rounds, he, his priority is to put a, uh, a trick, a, a trick marker in a, um, in a, in a, in a practice room. It is round four. It's an even number of round. I think he's going to do one of each. Yeah, he says first priority is to put a, a trick marker in a classroom, and then his second priority is to put a trick marker in a um, in a practice room. So he's going to do one of each. Uh, I think he chooses randomly as far as he chooses randomly. No, he doesn't. Let's see. He. His priority for classrooms is, uh, is fame, shards, reduced yield, coins. So I think he's going to place a trick marker here first. Now I'm, I'm saying he's placing a trick marker. It's actually not a trick marker. It's a special academy marker, I think the, the actual term is. You'll see it looks a little different. Um, But normally, when you place a trick, mar uh, when you place a an academy marker in a classroom, that means you can't uh, perform that trick any longer. That doesn't apply to the air. Remember all the rule: the air doesn't care. He just keeps performing. So uh, he's he's happy to continue performing. Uh, but I think it's on an even numbered route. He's going to go here first. I think. Oh, he went to a practice room first.
in even rounds. Oh, I'm sorry. I read my instructions back. Where in even numbered rounds, uh, he places a practice room first, then a classroom second. So um, he goes to the pra the practice room first, and when choosing between these two, yeah, he wants this type of ability that gives him the ability to orient a trick marker in any way, shape, or form without having to worry about link circles and all that those special requirements. So that's why he he put his uh, pepper his best trick his best academy marker there for his uh, Pepper's Ghost. So now when he places a trick marker for Pepper's Ghost, he does not have to worry about uh, how he orients that trick marker. Now he's going to go over here, I think, and place his academy marker. Everybody only has one academy marker for every type of trick. And his next best trick is uh, the wolf cage. So I think he's going to take his um, diamond and stick it here, I think. <laughs> Without, oh, pub in a bottle. Well, he did go there. Oh, yeah, he obviously put the pub in a bottle there because well, let's see. It was between improving money yield or shards. And what's his priority in classrooms? Fame, shards, yield coins. Okay, so shards are his second highest priority. Neither of these affected fame, so that's why he grabbed that. And his priority, by the way, in practice rooms is um, is better yield, freely orient, additional trick marker, and then ignore components last, and ignore three a component, uh, ignore four coins worth of components. So this was his least favorite type of ability. That's why he went with that one. Anyway, uh, so uh, yeah, placing the academy can be a little tricky sometimes. Back to me. I think I'm going to the dark alley. So I've got three action points to spend. I could spend a shard for a fourth. Uh, so what's the... You may use enhanced character in the theater. That's probably where I want to do it. Next round, draw further action cards from the dark alley. Cost one action point instead of two. I think I won't rotate the prophecies. I'll just spend my three action points on two cards. You orchestral interlude. You, retrie, you receive your tricks bonus, link bonus for each trick marker connected to the trick you set up, even if the category symbols don't match. Yeah, I think I'll grab that. And uh, you may learn a trick from any category. Oh, learn a trick from any category regardless of the die roll. Absolutely, I want this one. And the learn trick action costs me one less action point. Oh, perfect timing for this. That's the one I want. Okay, that way I don't have to rely on the dice next round. Protégé is going to Market Row, so th what he does is he removes everything from his shopping list that's currently available in the Market Row, and then he tries to order everything else. Now, there are only two order slots available, so uh, he's basically going to be removing saws and glass and fat and uh well, fabric's not really available. Metal he'll remove. And then be, and disguises he'll remove. And between oil cans and ropes and gla and animals, I think he'll he'll order at least one of those at random. 
Uh, let's see, he's got two action points. Yeah, the marker row doesn't actually use a table. You just discard every component from the shopping list that's currently present in the market row by slots, including the quick order slot. Then you spend an action point and randomly select a component from the shopping list that is currently on order in the that is not currently on order in the market row, and you order it. And you keep ordering stuff until you run out of slots or run out of stuff to order. So uh some of these components he's going to be ordering in these uh, order slots here. He orders oil cans and animals. And let's let's get to the theater. Let's start placing trick markers in the theater. And I'm going to this. I'm going to Sunday. Trouble is, oh, but I can also spend a shard now for an action point because of the prophecy. So I am going to do that. And I don't remember if I have, a, I don't, I haven't spent a shard yet, so I'm going to add that to my mag magician power so I can get it back later. So I can now place two trick markers. Uh, one of them is going to be sawing the magician in half, of course, my best trick. Now that is a mechanical trick. Yeah, there's no way I'm going to be able to maneuver and get this shard link. So I think I'm just going to place up here. Grab two fame. Maybe I should have taken the coins now that my coins are so low, but the performance is going to get me a lot of money. Um, and again, for the same reason as last time, I'm going to place a mind reading trick on the same performance to just boost my performance and uh, get as many tricks performed as possible. And I'm going to get, oh, I can't, can I maneuver a link, a trick marker here? It's spiritual, so spiritual has to be in the circle. I uh, can't quite do it. Too bad. All right, can't get a link there. Placing the apprentice in the workshop, nothing happens. And I guess I'm ready. Oh, I still have lots of options here. He did hire an apprentice, so he's going to have an extra character to play with finally next round. But I was able to hold him off for four rounds to four characters. That's a big advantage because otherwise, if he starts hiring lots of characters early on, he can really tear you apart the, the air. Um, let's go to the academy with the protege in the top in the second slot. So I have two action points to spend. I want to get another secret. Oh, yeah, well, I just ordered components. I know I'm going to the market row, so uh, I'll take this secret. Okay. Now, I guess I'm going downtown. Uh, if I go downtown with my engineer, I would have to spend a shard. But I could get some money. How's my shards? Oh, I'm short a shard. If I spend a shard, I'm going to lose this ability again, but the air is not performing this round, so this doesn't matter to me, and I'm going to probably get my shards back up, so I'll be able to replace this power later. Yeah, I think I'm going to go downtown. And I will spend a shard. I'm going to lose. I'm giving up that power. I'll just have to acquire the power again. But I'm limited to learning one power around, so I don't know. But anyway, I'm going to have to buy a, buy an action point for a shard, which I'm not going to get back. So I'm now I've lost my magician power. 
because I've lost that shard. But with three action points, I could... What are the mechanical tricks? I, I'm not ready to acquire a trick. So I guess I'm going to the bank and I'm grabbing six money. Yeah, that's not a bad investment. Okay, and then finally the magician is going to Sunday night's performance. He's really a famous magician now. He's going to he's going to have a great night with a plus 1 modifier on fame and money. And here we go in the performance. First trick is sawing a lady in half. Everybody loves it. Generates 2 fame and 6 coins with my modifier. Remember, I get a plus one fame, plus one coin, because I'm performing on Sunday. Wow, I'm doing really well compared to the air. But he'll, he'll come back, don't worry. My mind reading trick gets me an extra fame and an extra coin because of the modifier and a shard. And finally, my performance bonus. Uh, one link. Gets me one fame, three coins from my manager, two fame for the performance card, for a total of three fame and three more coins. I didn't even have to go to downtown. Um, I, I um, didn't hurt. Basically, it's going to cost me the wages of that specialist. So I got two. I got six coins from downtown. I have to pay him two coins. So I got four coins out of it. But I am pulling way ahead here. Classroom phase. Now there's something happening in the classroom phase. Uh, the let's so let's go back here. Classroom phase. The heir earned income for his, for the pub and a bottle trick. He increased his shards. Remember, you get an increase of of shards as income. So you get. Uh, Pub in a bottle is a, a threshold one trick, so he gets one, sh and it doesn't generate any shard, so he gets one shard for that. So uh, that's that was the classroom phase, pay wages. I had to pay for my two apprentices and my two specialists. He doesn't still have 10 coins. The year doesn't have 10 money yet, so he didn't get any points. He hasn't cashed in. Here's the current prophecy. We already knew that. Let's proceed. I think I wanted to learn a spiritual trick. Uh, oh, I don't know. Well, maybe not. Oh, wait. Spiritual. Which was the trick? Well, I have to get to the market row first, so uh, I'm getting ahead of myself. Pick two unmarked dice to re-roll. It's round five now. Uh, definitely I'll pick the market row die to re-roll. Both of these are identical. I attempted to reroll this one. I just don't know. Uh, he's going first again because he's behind and he'll go to downtown. So he's going to take the plus two slot anyway. So if anything, I want to open up one of these middle slots. So I'm going to reroll that guy. So that's much better downtown. Okay, well now I have a lot of money, so now I am more tempted to spend three coins to score two fame. Yeah, I think I will. Don't want to take any chances here. Okay, so for my, uh, I guess I'm putting my stolen secrets back in position. We still don't know if he's performing this round. 
round five. I think he's going to perform. I would expect him to perform. So that would be this is this is this will be a good one to have in place if he performs. So uh, okay, uh, I have an orchestral interlude. That would not go. Well, let's, so let's put let's send my magician to the theater. I'm performing every round. I'll put orchestral interlude on my manager, as I usually I saw you send my manager backstage. So you receive your trick mark, your tricks link bonus for each link connecting to the trick marker you set up, even if the category symbols don't match. Uh, that may be that may be tricky to do. Um, another Grand Magor, uh, yeah, I don't know if I'm going to be able to pull that off. I would have to put a trick marker here first and then put one here and then use the special ability. It's possible if I can use it, or I might just use it for the uh, action point too. So, what we got? Oh, yeah, so, so thirst for knowledge we want to use. That was going to get me learn, learn, allow me to learn a trick in any school of magic. Uh, I may have to spend a shard there. But let's, how's my shard count? Ugh. I can't afford to spend shards, otherwise I lose this. Hmm, that's going to be tricky. I'll send my other apprentice to the academy. I've got to get to the market row to buy some of these now newly, the new stuff that has come in once I decide on what trick I want. And the protege, I have a secret that gets me three coins when I go to the market row. So that's the guy who's going to the market row. Uh, if I learn a new trick with thirst for knowledge, I've got to get uh, my engineer to the workshop to prepare the trick. And I think that looks pretty good. And I and the heir, by the way, should have gotten. Yeah, he has a new apprentice now, so he's going to be a little tougher to work with. And I do think he's going to be performing this turn. So let's uh, uh, it's fifth round. Uh, I, I I'm trying to remember how the plan deck gets set up. Oh, there's a certain amount of randomness. What is it? Either No, it's either two performances or a setup and a perform. He's definitely performing this round. Well, no, it's possible he's not. But he may then perform in the last two rounds. I don't know. Let's find out what he's doing. He's performing. Wow, he's got three guys going to the theater. Very interesting. One of them using a... Uh, Um, one of them using a, one of his dark alley cards. Yep, there's his dark alley card that he put in place. But I think his priority is to go downtown. For we're all contest, everything's contested here, and his priority. Let's see if he's ready to perform. Let's review his priority again. Um, if his stance is ready, he places a character at the theater on the earliest possible day. He will take Saturday, leaving Sunday for me. That's fine. I think that's what he's going to do. Yep, let's proceed. Placing the protege at the theater. He's going to be placing two trick markers. Uh, the pro his protege is now worth three action points to him. With three action points in the theater at, at easy difficulty, that's two trick markers. And he remember, he's looking for the best link bonus he can get. He's going to be placing his best. He's going to be placing Pepper's Ghost um, first, and he's got two trick markers available, so he may just use both of them. And that's the spade. He's definitely placing a, a trick marker. Now, Pepper's, well, he got ahead of me, but Pepper's Ghost is a, um, is a, what is it? It's a spiritual trick, isn't it? 
Pepper's Ghost is oh, but but uh, he can ignore orientation. He could freely orient the trick marker any way way he wants. So he just oriented it to get a, he oriented it to get, to get a link. That that honestly was his best bet. Okay, so that makes perfect sense. Notice he broke the rules. Uh, he would normally have to have this inside a link circle, but he made use of his special ability over here to, to orient the trick marker any way he wanted to, and he did so to get the link. And this is a, what, a threshold 16 trick, so that's worth two fame for him. Just got two fame. Now he's placing another spade trick marker on another performance card. Looks like the second performance card to get another trick, uh, to get another link bonus uh, of, of two fame. So we just got another two fame. Now I may have a need to use my Yoruba special ability. I think that's probably going to come into play this turn. I think, yeah, probably will, because he—I know he's going back to the theater again to play to play more trick markers. Anyway, what do I want to do next? I think I want to go downtown right away because I can't afford. I don't want to. I don't want. He hasn't gotten enough fame yet. But how many tricks does he have at level 16? Because he wants to have two if possible. So this one's level... Um, look at the wrong guy here. This is 16. Oh, he's got his two level 16 tricks. So if, if he goes to the downtown, he's going to hire another apprentice. Now, can I, can I learn the trick... Well, actually, it doesn't matter. What trick am I interested in here? So, I can buy cogs and get horror saws. Oh, wait. Yeah, I have saws, don't I? I do. Um, so, this is four fame and eight coins. Two trick markers, two action points. So horror saws is a, is a possibility. Well, so I'm going to keep this in my head here. So that's four fame, eight po eight coins. Uh, I have to get a pane of glass. Six fame and four coins. Four fame, six fame. Fabric's now available because I ordered it last round. Got plenty of money. Ten fame and four coins. Metamorphosis. Four fame, six fame. Six fame, five money. I have the disguise, I have the saws, I have the glass, I would just need to buy fabric. Six fame and five money versus ten fame and four money. Oh, I'd have to buy another disguise, wouldn't I? That might be pushing it. I've got, oh, I only have one disguise. Oh, yeah, Metamorphosis might be a little out of, out of six fame and four money, two cogs, three panes of glass. I need, I, I have the glass now. I have to buy two cogs. So two cogs for this one, six fame and four money. Six fame and five money. 
and I would only have to buy three fabric. I think I'm going with mutilation. Yeah, okay, I'm going to go with mutilation. I hope that's not a mistake. So let to do that, of course, I have to place this guy downtown. Got my three action points that I need. Uh, remember, I have barter with power. Oh, not barter with power. What's what the heck's in the, the card? Uh, thirst for knowledge, learn from any school. So I can learn from any school of magic, and I am going to learn mutilation, which is going to. I need two action points to prepare. I get two trick markers, and when I perform it, I get six fame, five money, and I need to buy three fabric at some point this round. Oh, and that only cost me one action point. Because of, because that this also says learn trick costs one less action point, so that cost me two action points. So I had three. I'm down to one, but uh, even if I spend a shard, two two action points are not enough to do anything. So unfortunately, I didn't get the full thrust of that ability. Back to the air, uh, who was probably. Going back to the theater again. Well, yes, I think. Yeah, going back to the theater, that's priority when he's performing. He wants to get his trick markers out. Uh, he's going to use this as a plus one. Uh, this is his protege, so he's got four action points. Four, four action points, really? Three action points for the protege plus one is four action points in the theater, which is not even in the table. The table only goes up to three action points. Uh, anyway, I assume he's just going to place two trick markers. Yeah, two trick markers. Now, he doesn't have any more of these. So he's going to go with the wolf cage next. This is a, an escape with a, uh, so he's going to try to get a, a link bonus with this one. There it is, and it's a shard link, but that's another two fame for him. He's catching up. Now he's placing a uh, rabbit from the top hat. That's only a, th a one threshold. It's a, an optical trick. There's another link. Okay, so that's definitely the performance card. We don't want him. We don't want him performing this 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 coming round. That means that if I'm going to be performing and he's going to be performing, I want to put my trick markers over here, so I can perform this card and force him to perform this card using my Yoruba special ability. Okay, uh, let's go to the market row and buy my fabric. I had to get my three coins for my uh, protege. Remember, I have that spe that secret. Four action points to spend. That's that's crazy. But I can bargain the price down of my uh, of the fabric I buy. So I'm buying three pieces of fabric, bartering the price down to one coin. You can't barter it all the way down to zero coins. You have to spend something. But three pieces of fabric for one coin is a steal. I don't think there's anything, there's nothing else I need to buy in order to activate mutilation. So this should, uh, this should, this should allow me to get ready to prepare that trick. Let's buy it. Yeah, now I meet the requirements of mutilation. I've got one action point to spare. Uh, I don't really have any reason to even order anything. Unless I plan to buy another trick, learn another trick. 
I don't really have any. Well, what was that trick with the ten fame? <laughs> trick. Where where are you here? This one, metamorphosis. Oh yeah, required a two more disguises. Probably another piece of rope. Or do I have three ropes? I only have two ropes, so I need another piece of rope. I have the glass and I have the fabric. But I really yeah, oh um are the disguises no longer available? Yeah, they're no, they're gone. So maybe I'll, with my one action point remaining, I'll order disguises just in case. Can't hurt. Okay, back to the heir who was going downtown. That's his next priority. Uh, one action point plus one is two action points downtown. He's going to use one die. He's going to hire another apprentice, and it'll, that'll fill him out with six characters. Okay, he'll get that at the end of the round. Oh, and did I get my money for when I placed? Yeah, I, I don't think I had 12 coins. I want to be sure my program worked. Uh... Secret one grants you three coins when you place your protege in the marker row. Okay, so I got my coins. Let's go to the academy. Three action points to spend. Oh, I guess I can get one more secret and top me top off my protege. So what do we got? If you place your protege in the theater, collect a fame and a coin. If you place your protege in the workshop, collect a fame and a coin. Well, if I prepare my tricks this round, which I'm going to be doing, I probably won't have to go back to the workshop. So I doubt if I have, I'll have an opportunity to place the protege in the theater, but I think that's the one I'm going to grab. Yeah. I'm more interested in having three action points available for my protege. I've got a, a one point remaining. I could spend a shard, but that would cost me that. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't. I want this to be intact. When you perform, you choose an opponent's trick marker in your performance. That trick shields are paid to you as well as as its owner. Okay, uh, and that. If I perf that would mean I would want to perform here. Oh, wait a second. I may not be able to get use of that. Because if I perform over here the way I want to, I force him to perform here. If I put my trick... Although I could place a trick marker here and here and force him to perform here. Oh, hmm, so many, so many combinations. Uh, do I want to, I don't want to spin a shard. Uh, I, yeah, I, for now I, I want to keep that, I don't want to lose this magician power, so I will end my turn. His priority is uh, going to the market row. Again, he's going to refresh his shopping list and order what he can. He orders rope. All right. Uh, actually, the only trick I have to prepare is this one, my mutilation trick, and that's going to cost me the two action points that I'm going to have with my engineer, so that's perfect. So I will prepare my mutilation trick and get two trick markers. There's going to the theater with his magician, performing on Saturday night. And uh, now I'm ready to set up my tricks, and I'm going to have to see how I work this out. So, Orchestral Interlude, receive your tricks bonus for each trick connecting to the trick you set up, even if the category symbols don't match. 
and I'm setting up two trick markers. Oh, wait a second. No, I'm not, because I'm Sunday. I'm gonna only have I'm gonna have two minus one. I'm only gonna have one action point. So I'm only placing one trick marker. I only have one action point. Obviously, I'm. Unless I use the action point from the dark alley card and not use the feature, not use the ability, that would allow me to do what I wanted to do, which was to place one trick marker on his performance card and one tricker on my trick marker on my own performance card. Or am I better off placing two different trick markers on this performance card and force him to just perform this? Wait a minute. So if I use my dark alley card as an action point, I think I want to do that. Yeah. Let me start by placing. I'm. I hope I'm doing this right. Let's start with. No. Let's start with this trick marker. Oh wait a minute. What if I use this trick? I need the shards. And this is uh, spiritual. I think this is a better bet. Let's see. Mutilation is optical. There we go. Okay, so if I orient it this way with the spiritual in this link circle, I don't get a link now, but I will get a link when I place my mutilation trick up here, and it'll be a shard link. If I rotate my trick marker that way, that's, I think, what I'm going to do. Yep, now I grab mutilation. I... Put it right here and get a shard link. Perfect. Definitely need the I need the link and I'm taking the three fame for the link bonus. And now I'm placing my magician and it's time for the performance phase. Sunday night plus one modifier. Yeah. Okay, Larry, you can use your Uber's special ability to spend one shard and dictate which performance card the heir will use. I certainly don't want him to perform this one. I want him to perform here. So I am going to spend that shard, and now um, I've got an excess shard, uh, so I don't lose that ability. Oh, but I'm not going to get anything from that ability anyway, because I'm not on his trick. Oh, maybe I would have been better, uh, but then I would have given him, given him a shard if I went here for the shard link. Ah, uh, I don't care. All right, so, I, yeah, I'm going to spend a shard to you, force him to use this performance card and only get perform one trick. Sort of like a little bit of backstab. So maybe this is more like the Prestige movie, a little bit of backstabbing, not murder, but... Uh, Okay, so that's uh, that's his return. You could probably figure that out on your own. And now my performance is going to be nice with uh, my big trick, my mutilation trick with a plus one modifier, seven fame, six money. Wow. One fame, one coin, one shard with the plus one modifier. I'll need all those shards coming in. And look at that, uh, four coins and one fame. Eh, it could have been better, but not a bad performer bonus. So my coins are through the roof. Classroom phase, again, the heir earned some uh, income for his um, uh, pub and a bottle trick. And here we are in round six. Wow, I'm just pushing through. 
so what ex what are the exciting things happen? So we got his shard for the pub and a bottle trick. I didn't have to pay for my protege. I paid six coins in wages. The heir finally had ten coins uh, to spend to get two fame. So that's worth noting. That happens in the pay wages phase. And here we are with the current prophecy being Thursday and Sunday have no yield modifiers. And I don't expect him to perform this, uh, this round. So I'm not going to get my plus one bonus for performing on Sunday. That's, that's a shame. All right. Forging ahead. Metamorphosis was an escape trick, wasn't it? No. Metamorphosis is considered a spiritual trick. <laughs> How did I get that? Yeah, that's the only reason I looked that up. Uh, we could hire a manager. I, uh, that doesn't help me. I could hire another apprentice, potentially. I'm not sure I really need to. Maybe. Do I still have my Dark Alley cards? No, I spent them all. Uh, anyway, I have to pick a die to re-roll here. I don't really know. Um, I'm, always, I'm always hesitant to re-roll the downtown die. But maybe that will limit him somewhat. I don't have a dire need to go downtown. I don't know. Let's... Let's see what happens here. He's going first anyway. Oh, well, those aren't, that wasn't great. I have to spend three coins on it, but I have 17, so I am going to keep continuing to advertise. He certainly is. He is closing the gap. He's, he's down 11 points. And I still don't have enough shards to learn on a fourth power. Oh, so anyway, I do get my shard back here. Um, and I didn't benefit from Stolen Secrets. I'm not sure if I'll ever benefit from this. I wonder if I should, uh... Oh, but this has to go in the top slot, unfortunately. Maybe I'll have enough shards next round to make use of this and pull and grab six extra... That would be six extra fame, right? Yeah, two... Two times two, assuming I don't hire any more characters. That's six extra fame. Um, let's leave my powers alone this round. So let's close that up. We're definitely going to the theater, so he's going. And as usual, he's going. Fortunately, only those two folks are going. Um, I want to keep my coins high. I'd like to get, I need to get back to the academy and get some more banners. And I want those eight points. I've got to time that just right because I don't want if he if he goes falls behind on banners, he'll just go to the academy and uh, oh and 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 it's in uh, at the end of round five, two more rooms got revealed. Uh, so now more rooms are open opened up in the academy. So I think I definitely should go to the academy. Uh, let's definitely, let's go to the, the dark alley for sure. Is this the round where the dark alley, no, the no yield markers. What's next round? You may place two characters on each of your turns. I don't even think that applies. Uh, well, I don't know. Let's send, let's for now plan on sending somebody to the marker row. I may not use it. I don't have a lot of choices here. Um, I'll send my protege downtown because I can't send to the theater. And I have no reason to go to the workshop. Well, if I were going to go to the workshop, I'd do it for mind reading, but maybe I can use, I can finally put mind reading in the classroom and get some income from that. So maybe that's where I'll, 
So let's send the engineer to the academy. Um, I may I may want to try to pull off another big renovation if I can. All right, let's go with that. Uh, do I? I don't think he's going to perform this round. Yeah, he's just he's just preparing. But he does he have full his full complement of uh, yeah he has his full complement of characters now. And he can still hire more apprentices, which will just give him some endgame scoring points. But now he's going to six locations. Lots of contested locations here. He's going first. Um, I think he's going... No, he's going to go to the theater on the... Uh, well, no, wait. He is busy preparing... So when he was preparing his, his, his priorities to go downtown, I think he's going to go downtown. And I think he's at Fame, yeah, he's going to learn a Fame 36 trick downtown. That's what he's going to be doing. Anyway, let's uh, proceed. Do two dice. He's going to hire an apprentice or hire, hire a manager. He is learning the Iron Maiden trick. He dumped one of his old tricks. And, well, I'm sorry, I, I just was, what did he just do? Uh, Iron Maiden prepared it automatically and hired a new manager, as I expected. So his round seven is going to be a biggie. That The apprentice he has is going to go into his extra excess and he's going to use his manager, which will give him more action points. Okay, so here we are, round six. What is contested? Probably the academy. Uh, Theater-wise, he's busy preparing, so he's going to go to the latest possible day when he's preparing. Uh, but it doesn't matter because it's it's Friday and Saturday with identical yields, for, so it doesn't affect me. That means I'm going to the academy next. Plus two action points. I can actually perform two actions. Wow, I haven't been able to do this. I don't need any more secrets. I'm chock full. Um, I'm uh, so I guess I'm renovating, right? I've got 14 bucks to spend. All right. Well, let's see. What's my best bet? I'm at fame threshold three. I could pay 11 coins for 13 fame. Wow. Uh, I can get uh, nine coins for nine. 9 for 9, 11 for 13. So basically these are identical. It doesn't really matter to me. Let's go with the practice room. Because I may want to use my second action to um, practice one of my tricks. Yeah, so I'm going to go with this one. Pay 11 coins for 13 fame. That's crazy. And, uh, uh, yeah, as you can see, I, all the tiles are the same. Because um, I, unfortunately, I just don't have that many tile images uh, at my disposal yet. Anyway, I'm down to three bucks, but I've got 69 fame. And I think I will now put my best trick in this in this slot, um, and yeah, mutilation would allow me to orient the slot any way I want. Actually, let's think about this. Uh, let's see what performance card came up. So this is a uh, optical trick. I certainly want to avoid this. 
I can get a link without having to rearrange. Um, if I line up optical here, that would put a an escape up here. Um, I of course he may go to the theater and st I don't know. Um, I might be better off. Let's see. This is a mechanical trick. There's a link up here, but not in the vicinity of the shard. You know what? I think I'm going to use this spot for this trick. Not this trick, as you might expect, but this one, uh, so I can freely orient, freely orient this trick marker any way I want. I think that's the one I want to I want to do. Okay, so that gives me a trick, uh, a, an academy marker there. He's going to the theater, placing a trick marker for his best trick. Wow, four trick markers. I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to. Is he, oh, but he's not performing this round, right? Um, yeah, he's not performing this round. So. So I don't have to worry about him performing this trick. I gotta I just gotta make sure he puts a trick marker sometime next round on some other trick so I can keep him from avoiding to get to perform that trick. The truth of the matter is, as soon as this expires and gets removed, or at the end of the game, he's gonna score these tricks anyhow. But I, but if he does it that way, he does it with a minus one famed coin modifier. So I certainly don't want him. To, I want to try to keep him from performing these actively and just getting the that bonus at the end of the game. All right, uh, that was a little hairy. So uh, what did he just do again? Yeah, he placed. He just placed a trick marker. Okay, so and he got a, a got a shard uh, got a link out of it, not a shard link. Okay, um, where am I going next? I don't think content. Oh, dark alleys contested. So I guess I'm going to the dark alley. Three action points. Okay, that's fine. Um, that's interesting because uh, Thursday and Sunday aren't even available in this round, so it was not even an issue. Okay, we're, we've got three action points, buying two cards. Ooh, I think I want paid audience. If you perform on Thursday, ignore the yield modifier. Sunday's yield modifier applies even on Saturday. Yeah, let's grab paid audience. And for my second, let me set up a trick, even if the performance card has no free slots. Uh, magic of diversity, you receive a bonus based on the symbol of the prepared trick. That could be interesting. You may lose... If you learn this trick, you may choose to return another trick to the dog or residence. If you do, place all trick markers and the symbol mark from that return trick on the new trick. I don't know about that. Let's go with Magic of Diversity. Oh, am I definitely going to the workshop? Oh, okay. Wait a second. He's going to the he's going to the market row first. Oh no, he's already gone been to the downtown. Uh, okay, so he just orders a lot of stuff. Nothing too exciting with the market row. Um, I forget what he did downtown. Oh, he hired somebody. That's what he did downtown. And he learned, to, maybe learned a trick. Okay, I'm, I'm starting to lose it here because it's getting late. Um, and I'm playing this straight. 
I haven't taken a break. But I, at this point, I think I just want to play it all the way through. Where am I going next? Downtown? What would I do downtown? I could get some money. I can't learn a new trick. I could hire an apprentice. I'm not sure I can make use of an apprentice. What slots are available downtown? The plus zero slot. Oh, but my protege has three action points. Perfect. Okay. So he's going downtown. I do have the three action points. Do I hire an apprentice or do I go for the money? Let's go for the money because I think I'm going to... I've got... I'm ahead on banners at the moment, and I think I want to be sure I've got plenty of money to renovate as much as possible. So let's grab the money and run. Okay, he's going to the academy as well. He, I bet he's going to renovate one action, renovating a practice room because he was behind on banners. So he's back in the lead on banners. Let's go and set up my tricks. I'm tempted to not bother spend. Um, I think I'm going to just idle this guy and not pay his wage and not send. I don't really have a dire need to go to the market row. Uh, let's set up my tr tricks at the theater. Two action points. Set up two tricks. Oh, right. Um, so I want, to, I want to get that shard link. So we're going to go with mutilation. I know I can get, yeah, and then I can orient the other one freely to get the shard link. So let's do this one first to get the link. Three fame, because it's a 36 threshold trick. And then we'll place this one and orient it freely to get a shard link. And two fame. So, uh, how about my shards? Ooh, it's covered up. Uh, shard short of being able to get that last performance, but I think I'll be. Uh, I hope I can get that other shard. Um, anyway, he's going to dark alley. He only got one card, really? Three action points. Dark Alley, three action points, easy mode, one card. Okay. And he again, he grabs whatever he has the fewest of, and priority is theater. Uh, what does he have? He didn't have a theater card, so that's what he got. Okay. Uh, anyway, I don't think I have a dire need. I don't. I think I'm just gonna keep this guy idle and not bother going and not paying his wage. I, I, I don't really have a, a... I'm happy with the tricks I have. I don't want to learn a new trick. I think I could just finish it off. So let's just go to the theater and uh, he's going to the workshop doing nothing. So now with performance fit, uh, yeah, we're not we're not going to bother. We're going to just end it, go to the performance, and uh, one fame and five coins. Certainly, my money's okay. Six fame and five coins, <laughs> and a performance bonus. Oh, it's going to involve some nice fame. Two fame for links, three coins, and three fame. Uh, so five fame and three coins. 26 point lead. Jeez, I guess uh, the magician powers really pulled me ahead here. I don't know if I got, did I get enough shards? I'm a shard short. Darn it. I wanted that magician power. I really should have started teaching this trick. And I never, I, I should have taught it last, uh, I could have gotten, a, I could have put it right here and gotten a shard. 
instead. But then this one gave me, eh, I got the shard link because I was able to orient this wet. It doesn't matter. Okay, so this one is place two characters on each of your turns during the place characters phase. I don't even know if my program handles this properly, but I guess we're going to find out. Okay. Well, that's pretty nice. Learn any, any kind of trick from any school of magic. I have to pick two dice to re-roll. This is the last round of the game. There, oh, there's no classroom phase in the last round of the game. So there's nothing to be had from the classroom. Uh, <clears throat> wow. Oh, well, Market Row is, is not so important to me. I'm starting to lose my voice. I apologize for that. <clears throat> it's a good thing that we're re-rolling this one. I want to get to my Sunday performance again. Dark Alley, I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't really care so much about the Dark Alley. Darn it, Sunday's blocked off. Darn it, darn it, darn it. Uh, okay, I'm definitely spending the coins. I'm not taking any chance. I'm advertising, keeping my hefty lead. Because, again, he is going to come back. Um, he's going to get all those tricks in this last round. Uh, we'll run through this again. If he doesn't perform this card, and I'm planning, I'm going to make sure he doesn't, uh, we're using Yoruba's special ability, uh, then he will get, he, at the end of the game, he will get the trick yields for these tricks, but at a minus one modifier of fame and coin for each one. Okay, last round. What am I doing? Magician. I've got a paid audience over here. That's going on my magician. Oh, Wait a minute. Or not. Because I'm not... What, what are the days available in the theater? There's no Thursday. There's no Sunday. Wait. Sunday's yield modifier applies to you if you perform on Saturday. Oh, yes. Perfect. What if I sent a protege to the workshop? Let's tentatively think about doing that. Although I only need two trick mark. I only need two action points. But what if I sent both of these guys? You know, you don't, I don't get any points for shards, and that's what the engineer gets you for being backstage. So, you know what? I just, I'll send the shard, I'll send the engineer to the workshop. I needed that one more shard. I could, that would have been worth six points to me. I'm mad. Oh, I'm not even considering mutilation on 36. Tr okay, so mutilation, the bonus is that if I have one of each type of specialist, I get 12 extra fame at the end of the game. I would need to hire... Uh, we we'll need an assistant. No assistant in place. Unless I have enough money, unless I can set the die, I would have to have five action points. I could send the protege downtown. He's going downtown first, isn't he? I don't know. All right, let me just kind of play around here. What if I send him downtown? Definitely put... Oh, wait a minute, we have magic of diversity. Yeah, that's going on the engineer. Okay. Uh, I want to get... i got to make sure I get back to the academy. To try to get my banners. Maybe I'm better off sending... What slots are available? Oh, the two action slot is not available downtown. 
What if I said at the protege to the academy, I could have enough slots to renovate two of these rooms? Oh, not enough action points. Um, but then again, I could just spend a shard at this point. I have three shards to spend. Okay, this is good. I'll just leave that. Leave it that way. Okay. Um, I could send an, an apprentice backstage to help out and get some more trick markers out, if possible. I for, what are the points you get for a dark alley? Two fame for each unused dark alley card. So that's worth four fame. Yeah, I guess it's go. It's worth worth it to get somebody to the dark alley. Or is it worth it to just go to the theater and try to place more trick markers? Um, if I were to get this, I would need three. Oh, this is not going to be enough. I may have to send him. I may have to send him to. That would give me three action points to be able to prepare both of these tricks. Okay, and I can send him downtown, and there, oh, but um, sh I may have to spend a shard, but that's fine. I, um, I'm not sure even if there's a point in going. Is that everybody? So I've got two, I've got three people going to the theater, two backstage. Um, I've got workshop to prepare my tricks. Academy, um, I may have to, what if I send him, maybe I should send him to the Academy. I want to be able to renovate two rooms. Uh, what, what are the banners? So he's got six to my five if i renovate renovate two rooms i can get two banners and get the eight points i definitely have to do that which means maybe this guy has to go to the academy and the apprentice goes downtown and maybe the apprentice doesn't even go downtown because i probably won't have enough action points to to make it worth my while in that case maybe i don't go downtown and send the apprentice to the dark alley because that's worth those cards are worth two points. Money's worth every three coins are worth is worth a point. And I could probably get some money. Because he because um, if he goes first, yeah. Although if I go downtown, I might be able to get two cards, which is worth four points. So let's send let's forget the downtown. And just send you to the dark alley. And I think this looks good. <sighs> okay. He's definitely performing. And notice he has an extra apprentice. And uh, I, I, I think he's going to take two turns. So what does he have? Yeah. Uh, let's see if, it's, if my program works. I, I think it will work, but maybe not. I don't really remember. This is a weird prophecy. You have to take two turns in a row. Let's see what happens. He's placing his engineer in the theater. Setting up two trick markers. Obviously wants to get the best trick links. There's a trick link. Setting up his best trick again on the first performance card. Oh, he didn't get a link. Couldn't get a link that time. And he's taking a second a turn. And he's placing more trick markers. Two more trick markers. Got a shard link. Well, that came back. Oh, he didn't pay. He could have placed two trick markers, but he didn't. Why? Because he's out of trick markers. Wow, all those trick markers are on performances. Okay, that's a good reason. I think I go to the academy now and 
and get my banners. Four action points. I've got 13 money. I could spend 11 for 13 here and spend, oh, I need, I can't, I got to make sure I've got enough money. Five for three. Seven for five. That's the best combination. I don't even know if I have enough top cards to place. Nine for nine. And four for one is 13 bucks. Maybe that's my best combination. Let's do that. That was nine for nine. So that's three, six banners to his six. And now I'll have a, next, a seventh banner, which will get me eight points. Uh, I don't really care at this point. I'm not teaching tricks. I just want to get the banner. Okay, so I'm all set for that. And I get another turn. Okay, fine. So where to next? Um, is he going to the dark alley? He is. If I get there first, I'll be able to get two cards worth four points. So I'm not buying these to use them. I'm just buying them to... Um, uh, to get the points for them. Okay, so I'm just going to take two cards. Okay, it doesn't matter. They're worth two points each at the end of the game. He is going downtown, which I'm not even going to. He's learning a new trick. What did he learn this time? Beast within. But I don't think he has... Um, He's not going back to the to the theater, is he? To yeah, he's just going to perform, so he's not even going to be able to do anything with that trick. Okay, he's teaching, but there's no classroom phase, so it doesn't matter. All right, let's prepare my tricks. I got my three action points, so let's prepare. Now I should also notice by point out that there are additional abilities you can do on your specialist cards. For example, on the manager card, you can spend an action point to swap components between uh, back and forth uh, to take to uh, here. And over here, you can swap tricks uh, by spending an action point. And if you had an assistant, you can move an apprentice into the free apprentice slot on assistant if you, um, uh, if you spend an action point. I never did that, but I just wanted to you know that it's possible. Okay, let's uh, get these tricks prepared. Oh. I forget what the trick, I forget what the bonus is. Um, no, uh, where are you? Diamond, this is a diamond trick. Uh, Two shards doesn't do me any good at this point, so no. And now I'll prepare this trick. And now clubs gets me four bucks. So that I'll take. So now we're going to the theater with the manager on Saturday. I will get my uh, performance, uh, my yield bonus thanks to my paid audience. I think I want to put two of these trick markers out. With, I can get a link bonus there. For three fame. And I can get a link. Oh, I can't get a link bonus here because there's no circle. Oh, that's a bummer. 
I could get a, a link bonus if I put my clubs trick down, but this is this generates much more. He's going to perform anyway, so I'm better off going on this card, I think. Yeah, I'm better off going on this card because uh, to get because my diamond tricks are just worth so much more, aren't they? Yeah, that one's only one shard. So uh, yeah, let's just go here. Drawing one dark alley card. I don't know how many money he has in his hand, but he's going to get some good points there. Finally going to the theater. And then I've still got somebody going backstage. It's going to get me one more trick marker. One action point. I guess it's going to be this guy. Which is a mechanical trick. Uh, wow, is that a double link, a shard link, and a, 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 that's two links. Wow, that's a beauty. And this is going to be the card I want to perform. So uh, I should be getting, this is a two, th a thre this is a 16 threshold trick. I should be getting uh, two fame twice plus a shard. Yep, perfect. And finally, my magician, paid audience, Sunday Yield modifier applies to you if you perform on Saturday. Perfect. Perfect, perfect. Here we go. I certainly do. And I'm going to force you to perform this one as opposed to this one. It's still a good, I mean, it's still a good yield for you, but at least I get something out of it. And you are going to get the, again, you are going to get the reduced yield of these three tricks. And I should get a plus one modifier on this, I think. Yes. Six fame, I get seven fame. Five coins, I get six coins. He gets a two fame and a shard for his performer bonus. Bonus. Okay. Um, just one thing. I want to pause here for a second. His performance bo performer bonus did not include anything for his specialist backstage. Uh, is that because we're playing on easy level? Performance phase. Yeah, easy level, no specialist bonus. Normal level, two coins per character assigned backstage. Uh, per specialist, I should say, backstage. Hard, one fame per character backstage. Okay, I just want to be sure about that. I'm getting my plus one modifier. I'll tell you, having the computer program remember everything that I would otherwise probably forget. There's so many things to remember in this game. Four fame for links, three coins for manager. Do I now the question is, do I have enough of a lead to keep him from winning with these with the fame he's gonna get on that? So here he goes, pay wages. This is when he gets his collector. He's collecting. I think I'm going to pull out this victory. I think. He's creeping up. Yeah. Okay, so here's endgame scoring. I'm not getting anything for Tricarian charts because uh, I'm, I, I use the Magician powers, and I didn't really... I don't know that I got that much out of them. Yeah, maybe I did. I, I got to keep those shards. I don't know. 
Um, it was it was certainly nice to have it. Uh, it just means I don't get to score for the shards I, I've collected otherwise. But I might have changed my strategy otherwise. I, I remember the I got that mind reading trick specifically because um, uh, it gave me shards, which is what I wanted to get early on in the game. Anyway, I didn't score for shards. He had 11 shards at the end of the game. He gets a shard, a point for each, one fame for each. That's 11 fame for the air. Uh, I get. He doesn't get. He cashes in his money, and I probably did. Uh, did he cash in? So anyway. Um, Here's pay, uh, pay wages. Let's see. So scoring. So this is when he scored uh, with a, a minus one modifier for all of his trick markers remaining on any cards at the end of the game. Here's where I paid my wages. And here's where he cashed in. He had. Uh, he actually had thirty bucks. Cashed it in three times for six points. Okay, just wanted to be sure about all that. Anyway, uh, I have 19 coins. I get one fame for every three. That's six. Dark alley cards. Two fame for every dark alley card in your hand. I got four. He got eight. He had four cards in hand. I knew he had a bunch of cards. Advanced tricks. I would have had to have an assistant in order to get 12 points for my mutilation trick. Unfortunately, the assistant never came up on that die. Uh, he got five, he gets just a flat five points on easy mode for every 36 threshold trick. Uh, let's, uh, let's uh, double check that. End game. Yeah, you get five fame, uh, an easy seven extra fame, uh, for each of those tricks if you're normal, uh, and ten extra fame if you're playing hard. Um, okay, uh, bonus for the, any, for the seventh character, he had one extra, extra apprentice. Um, if you remember, uh, he he hired an extra apprentice. He just couldn't fit it on his board, but he had that one character, and that got him. Um, oh, in an easy mode, he gets zero for that. Uh, yeah, zero fame for excess characters. Normal one fame for per excess character. Hard two fame per excess character. I got my eight points for my seven banners in the academy, and here's and that was it. Uh, final score: one forty-six to one twenty-eight. I gotta say, I feel pretty good about that game. Um, it went on for a really long time, as I expected. For any of you who watched this and saw anything I did wrong, anything my program did wrong, I really want to know about it. Um, Obviously, I want my program to work perfectly. I will probably do another one of these videos once I actually get my game and get all the graphics up to par and all the cards scanned and everything, you know, get get my program finalized. But I got to tell you, this, uh, this is a great program for me to have. And to be able to play solo, wow, I love this game. Love it, love it, love it. Thanks for watching, everybody. Appreciate it. Bye for now.